96. Um, still, still in a real. Oh, she just. Oh my god. She just didn't realize that the drop was hanging. That was scary. <laughs> that was scary. If you Welcome, have... everybody, to the Sweet Chess Championship for the top female players in the world. And once again, joined by the one and only Sophie Kogura Michelin. And I'm in her house. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's so good to have her here, but you know where you're going after the show, right? The back to the basement. Back to basement. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> that's such a host I am. <laughs> She's an amazing host. And we are here today to talk about two epic players of the female chess scenario. Former Women's World Champion Alexandra Kostanyuk, the chess queen, is going to face four-time US champion Anna Zatonsky. What do you think this match will bring? It, it's going to be an exciting match. We had first match, very exciting, and it was very tight, and I really enjoyed it, and I think that we will have um, a lot of entertainment today because both of the players are so strong. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexandra is considered to be a bit favorite because of her rating and she loves to play online plays mm -hmm. and so on. But um, Anna actually has positive score against her in uh, the games. Indeed, the head to head score is in favor of Anna Zatonsky that includes classical rapid and blitz games and they are over the board game. So we shall see if the four times US world if the four times US champion, I added the world champion, Alexandra, <laughs> Anna is four time US champion. If she is ready for the online challenge, Alexandra, a very experienced online player. Anna doesn't play that often online, so we shall see how that turns out. Once again, we will start with a five minute plus one second portion for one and a half hour. Then we have three plus one for an hour. And the last most exciting part is bullet, that bullet. Oh, that's the toughest one, I think. That's where the tables can turn and that's where like what's going on it's a blunder it's a raid oh no she missed it yeah that, that's going to be really excited and i'm really happy to actually uh commentate on it and not play it but i'll force you to play the bullet afterwards oh my oh my, oh my <laughs> what did i sign up for but i'm still happy with the deal i made because it means that you will have your own twitch channel that's true a that's deal true. is a deal yeah <laughs> All right, so um, what what do you think? What's going to happen today? Like, we will have a um, big difference in scores or it's going to be a level match? How do you think it will go? I think it's going to be a very close match. What we experienced on Wednesday, yeah. maybe that was to the extreme. We are referring to the first match of the Women's League Chess Championship. It started with a tie for every single segment between Katarina Lano and Elena Danielian. Yeah. They tied the five plus one, the three plus one, and the bullet was decided by the final game. Yeah, that was very, very exciting. The final game, actually, it, it happened also in uh, the match of the Jordan Conferes mm -hmm. against uh, Ariantari. It was same that mm -hmm. uh, the uh, score was equal and the final game would decide the winner. And um, that's a, that was a spectacular show as well as uh, the first match of Danielian versus Lachnon. I think this could go in a similar way. We can mention in the meantime the predictions, the smarter chess predictions that it's in favor of Alexandra. Yeah, it is. Uh, the predictions are that Alexandra will win with 1.524 in five minute split section, uh, five and a half and versus three and a half in three plus one section and bullet five and a half, four and a half. Ooh, I don't know. I'm I not think sure. it will be closer. And the win probability is 81% for Alexandra and 19% for Anna Zatonsky, but we saw Alina having an even less probability yes. to yes. win the match. And she, she did it. always balance and won the final game. So we can't really rely on the match prediction. This is what the stats say. It will be different over the ball, I, do, I believe. Yeah, and uh, I think that Alexandra uh, said that maybe this is one of the uh, weaknesses of Anna, that she doesn't play so much online chess and mm -hmm. she doesn't work so much on chess as she has a family, two kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alexandra plays a lot of... Uh, recently, she started to play a lot of online chess. And uh, she is actually also preparing for the candidates, which is beginning in just a few days. That's her main focus, the women's candidates tournament in Kazan. But I'm sure that she will do everything she can to advance sure. to the next round. 
And as you mentioned, since since she has started her own Twitch channel and plays even more online, that should be an advantage. She's very familiar with the chess.com platform. Anna, on the other hand, we are not sure whether she had the time to practice, at least for the match, if not in general during the year. Though she does wear a chess.com t-shirt. She does. And she has a very l- nice little note uh, there. Uh, it says, happy birthday to her student. That's very nice. I would love to have such a teacher. Me too. She's <laughs> going to be playing in front of a crowd of a couple of thousand viewers. And hey, she has a birthday greeting for her student. We shall ask her about that after the match. And we will. <laughs> and both of them, I think uh, Alexandra uh, has a daughter also. Mm-hmm. And uh, both of them are mothers. Though Alexandra did a lot of things. She uh, worked as a model. We know her as Chess Queen, and she actually played in a movie. Yeah, I didn't know about the movie when we looked up uh, Alexandra's career. We know about her chess career, but I didn't know that she played a role in a Russian movie. Yeah, and it was pretty successful movie. She played a role there, and the movie, uh, I think, if we translate it in English, it's called Bless the Woman, Um, and um, it is pretty famous from 2003 and the movie afterwards won some awards so yeah i would like to ask her how it is to play the movie i was always interested in that we will ask her for sure especially if she wins the match because then she will be in a great mood to talk about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it depends but i think first of all we will see three hours of thrilling chess it's Three hours, three and a half hours, the entire show. At the very end of the show, we will have the interview, so don't go anywhere. But the game has just begun. First game of the second match of the Women's League Chess Championship. And Chess Queen uh, starts the game with Knight of 3, G3, B3. Pianchetto, uh, uh, Pianchetto is the bishop. Usually she is playing E4, but uh, because of online chess and a lot of Bleeds tournaments she's playing, she plays everything. When I was looking at her games, uh, she she has like all sorts of first moves. Um, and this is no uh, exception that uh, she tries to uh, uh, start with knight of three, g3. I think we will see a lot of different openings. Um, and uh, so far, um, it's a very normal position, right? Uh, knight of three, b3, d4, c4. Um, usually, uh, I like it very much when there are two fianchettos mm-hmm. and then d4, c4, and not d3, c4. What do you think? Do you like when white plays d4, or do you uh, prefer more d3, c4, knight, d2, and uh, playing on this um, a1, h8 diagonal? I like more this Catalan type of setup, and the pawn is on d4. And with d3, those are mainly the English opening variations that Sophie was referring to. I think this usually is to a slight advantage for white because of the pressure in the center, and white was first, so white has already developed both of her bishops. But black will need to take time to develop the c8 bishop. The c8 bishop is a problem piece in these openings. Right, and this, uh, after c takes d4, knight takes d4, I think uh, we've seen it in the first match of uh, uh, Elena Daliani and, and um, uh, Katerina Lachno as well. Um, uh, the thing here is that after d takes c4, b takes c4, white actually wants to take uh, the c4 pawn with mm-hmm. b pawn. Right now, it wouldn't be that possible because c6 knight would be hanging, but after, let's say, um, um, knight d4, queen d4, which happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, if black wants to take d takes c4, I think white doesn't take queen c4, but instead white either will go queen d8 or would take b takes c4, because these actually, uh, this pawn mm-hmm. would turn. Oh, oh, she took the queen c4. C4 the queen. But it was also interesting what you mentioned that she had the option of taking on d8 and then b takes c4. She, may have been afraid that that pawn can become a target, so she took on c4 with the queen. Yeah, of course, there are pros and cons of uh, b takes c4. b file is open and there is a lot of pressure on b7, but after queen c4, I also like it. Uh, b5, though, what happened is uh, pretty interesting because that's uh, the very smart way how to unpin yourself uh, and uh, right away uh, play for equality because if Anna didn't play b5, rook a7, then it would be very difficult for her to untie. And what's to do with this bishop? Always the problem in this position is that light squared bishop is kind of a bad piece. 
It is, and she has managed with this very important maneuver that Sofiko has described to at least develop that route. Now, there are still a few issues to solve in Black's position. The bishop on d7 is not well placed, and the queen still has to find the best place. Queen b8 to try to trade queens, I think, is smart because this queen is obviously more active than the black queen, which will normally mean that white should try to keep the queen on the board. Right. Queen b8 I like very much, and after trading oh, everything... Trading. That surprised me. I thought she would try to keep the queen. Then probably rook c8, and maybe mm -hmm. uh, there was not good square for uh, the queen. And trading is very direct, uh, trades everything, and makes the use of the c-file. Because if rook c8 now, can white play bishop b7? Rook c1, rook c1, bishop c1, a5. Does it bring something? I don't think so. It looks pretty equal. It looks equal to me because the pawn can be pushed further. So I'm curious if Alexandra will achieve anything after this. No, rook c8 is on the board and the trade, bishop takes and now bishop c6. Still a slight pressure by white, but this shouldn't be much of a difficulty to hold. I agree with you. It is slightly better for white just because uh, she has better placed bishops. And again, bishop c6 is better piece than the bishop on uh, c8, but it shouldn't be a problem to uh, uh, defend this. Um, as we know, the end game role is to bring the king to the center because the king is very, very important piece in end games. Don't do it in middle games. <laughs> But in end games, you should bring your king uh, to the center uh, as soon as possible. That's what Anna doing. Still tricky for a blitz game, I think. Um, and uh, I think that uh, um, Alexandra will try everything uh, to make something out of this. I agree with you. And she's also handling the time better. Alexandra still has over three and a half minutes, and Anna is down to two minutes. So clearly, the chess queen is up to speed. This is a 5 plus 1 portion. Alexandra has said that her favorite time control is 3 plus 1, so right. that's the next segment. But 5 plus 1 is also similar in the sense that yeah. it's a blitz game with one second increment. Alexandra, huge experience with online chess. So I think we will see her going confident with the online chess experience she has, and we shall see how Anna can respond to it. In this game, I think she will hold. Black is doing fine to defend. Yeah, I agree with you, though. Uh, Anna generally is uh, uh, taking her time in real games as well. When uh, we were following her games at Olympiad, it was always that uh, she would think, think, then she would get into time trouble. And then when you think that, oh, that's where I'm getting caught her, then she becomes a beast. She is like calculating so nicely. And she's very, very tricky. E e in these type of positions, when she has um, slight, slight, slight edge, uh, she is pushing it all the time. It's, she never agrees draw and she will like torture you, you know, because I was commentating there and I was like, oh, come on, it's a draw, that draw, that draw. But she was playing, she was playing so She's much. Quite, she She's... Was not agree to a draw. Yeah, and she won that game. And I was like, okay, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> the effort will, uh, will play a role here. And she still has over three minutes. So three minutes versus one minute. Anna is going down on the clock. I think Anna, we have seen her play classical chess tournaments too, where she would get into serious time trouble. So she is the kind of player that likes to use her time, think for a while. Right. But at the very end of the game, you need to speed up. It's just a one second increment. That's it. One second increment. Right, it's just one second and it does not really help. It helps only if you are queen up and you want to mate and you are not flag. But uh, you cannot use this one second to uh, think. And we've seen how many times actually Elena Danielian uh, flag. And what we have on the board right now is also a very interesting game. I think that Alexandra made some progress because of the h5 pawn and mm -hmm. king has to be on f7 all the time. Uh, it has to guard the h6 pawn. But good thing for black is that there is a pin. Uh, so bishop on b7 is not such a bad piece. Uh, it has to defend the a6 pawn, mm -hmm. but still the bishop uh, from d3 cannot go anywhere uh, than staying on b1 uh, h7 diagonal. 
Yeah, now the king goes back to guard the G7 square, as some people described already. It's not easy to make a progress in this position, even though white has pressure, more space and more activity with her pieces. How do you actually do something that's a constant attack over the E4 pawn? And this bishop alone will not make any miracle. So objectively, right. this is a draw, but she should still try. She has two and a half minutes over 20 seconds, 21 seconds left for the four-time US champion. Not an easy situation, especially when tricky moves like this come. Do you want to trade or don't you want? Mm. Oh, now there's a b6 cross pawn. Yeah, I like it. I like the, that she, uh, she that she took everything because there is no pressure uh, anymore on h6 pawn, and it can be tricky for white actually. So who is first? Who's gonna queen first? A2, f7, a1. Or B8, look, there is a check because A1, B8, I think, is possible. Yes, the um, queen with a check of the yeah. move. And then take the H6. Oh, you cannot oh, you take can't. it because queen A6. <laughs> Indeed, this queen queen A6. cannot be taken, shouldn't be taken because black will win the queen. But that's a nice tactical motive in this position. But white can start giving checks. Although with only checks, you don't achieve much. Even a king and pawn game will still be a draw if white manages to trade queens because yes. it's an age cost pawn. Yes, it is. And a lot of moves happened. Uh, so we have queen e3 defending the h6. But uh, now what black should try is just not to trade the queens because king is way too far. But this can be tricky. Uh, when you have 10 seconds, only 10 seconds uh, on the board and white has pawn, mm -hmm. But I like how I like the uh, way Anna is defending this because after King D8, you want to bring your king as um, uh, closer as possible, and then actually you can trade. You can trade queens. Not now. Not now. <laughs> but for example, this one. Draw. This yeah. will still be a draw if the king gets to F7. So Anna is defending very well. But only seven seconds left for Anna Zatowski. Will she save this game? Well, in real life, she's very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in real chess game, you have 30 minutes, 30 seconds increment. Uh, here you have only one second, and I think that Anna defended this um, game really nicely. Though we should say uh, kudos to both players, because uh, Alexandra she showed the way how to make some progress, and Anna showed us a very nice uh, defensive uh, skills. Draw. Beautiful technique with queen f8, queen f7 in the end because the king and pawn and game is a draw that white king cannot come out of the corner. Yeah, very instructive technique by Anna Zatonsky. Saves a difficult position in the end because of the time pressure. It yes. wasn't so much about the end game, but the time pressure. And now Anna has the white pieces. I'm going to flip the board. Anna has white pieces and uh, we now see Vienna uh, Gambit. Anna plays um, a lot of d4 recently, though she was... Uh, playing e4 and uh, c4 as well, but recently um, it is um, Anna uh, who switched uh, to d4, but we can see here a lot of different lines. Mm -hmm. um, what happens here, I like it for white, generally, uh, this line, because I think that white is uh, the one who is fighting for the center for space advantage, and black has to still show how to equalize. Uh, the biggest problem for white here can be the c1 bishop. So we have now thematic uh, match that we have problems with the bishop. But this is the very typical way of um, uh, getting, not knight c3 can be a repetition here, but after knight a2, bishop d6, bishop d2 is of course possible. And after knight e4, bishop e1, and uh, we will have to expand on the queen side. So let's see what will happen. Will we have a um, three-fold repetition or will Anna go for something more? Bishop d3. Bishop d3 on the board. And I just wanted to mention that, as usual, we have a daily question. What should the chess community be doing to grow women's chess around the world? That is a great question, and we would like to know your opinion about it. Make sure to use the hashtag speed chess on social media. So let us know about your opinion, and we will definitely take that into account because that is something that's especially close to our hearts. It's Sofico. Yes. And also chess.com is doing a lot to develop a bigger chess community 
about women chess is that more girls, more women taking yeah. chess up as a sport or as really a hobby. hobby. I'm really happy Chesscom is doing so much for women's chess. And this is the first online women's speed chess championship. There was none. It, does, it did not exist. It was only for men. And yeah, I would say just more tournaments. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. More tournaments. Bring in more ideas. We will take into account your ideas. And as you mentioned, this is the first ever Women's Features Championship. $20,000 on the line. And the winner will qualify to the overall Features Championship. Yeah. Where also the husband of Sopiko, Anish Giri, will be competing. So who do I want to play against Anish? Let's <laughs> see. Hmm. None of them. I think they are too dangerous. <laughs> Now back to the game. This is one more time. The second game, Anna Zatowski with the white pieces, g3 after knight h5 to prevent the knight jump to f4 is a logical move. And now g6 so that black can prepare f5 in the future. And this knight has now a different option to not just the f6 square. Yeah, a lot of things happened. The pawn structure is changed. The e4, d5 usually is in white's favor because it closes the b7 bishop and uh, it's not so easy for black to uh, play c5 which is very much needed to have a relief in the uh, center but um i think black has uh, her own play on the king side as we usually see in the uh, king's indian attack we have like um f5 coming f4 and uh, so one with rook d8, rook e8, white, black might try something with c6 and uh, d takes c6, uh, bishop c6. If this happens, then it would be great for uh, black, but it's not so easy. Bishop d4 is nice. It is. I like this move. The knight. Normally, you would like to see a knight in the center, in the central square, but this bishop is useful as it puts pressure on the c3 knight and also in case we need protection on e5. It's just generally a useful move and it frees the c5 square for the rest of the pieces. So the knight is coming in already, yeah. jumping toward b3. Yeah, and b3 is a very important square because uh, white can, of course, uh, play for b4, but he has to take, uh, she has to take care of knight b3. Bishop c2, I like very much. It kind of um, serves to, um, uh, things first I want to take on um, d4 and I want to play b4 as well so after bishop c3 b takes c3 knight gets four passed on c c5 there is no more b4 and uh, white cannot kick this knight out but what happened is that white made uh, her center way stronger mm -hmm. because after let's say c6 white can always play c4 and c6 would be ideal if white would take on c6 with d takes c6, bishop c6. But if after c6, c4, then um, b, b pawn would be um, pretty uh, pretty weak. I like a5 a lot because that's about weakening the queen side. And if this trade happens on b6, the d5 pawn becomes a protected pass pawn. That's indeed a very good move because a5, b5, c4 inclusion is, of course, in white's favor. Though white has to take care uh, of moves like rook b8, uh, let's say if black decides to play rook e b8, c takes b5, a takes b5, queen b5, then there are moves like bishop d5 and so on, maybe. We can show it with um, arrows like rook e b8 mm -hmm. and c takes b5, a b5, queen b5, and bishop d5 tactics. Yeah, I, can, um, I think I can move it just so that we show this tactical motive that Sophie talked about. There's a discovered attack over the queen. Yeah, and I don't know uh, who is playing for what, but a lot of things happened. Um, and it is now Alexandra who has to be a bit careful because so far I liked very much how Anna played. She doesn't want, of course, to give up this pawn so easily. So she takes b takes c4, queen takes c4. And it's easier 
this one, so really important. The C5 knight has lost the outpost. There's no pawn protecting it, no B pawn, nor D pawns. So this is going to be a difficult position for Alexander. Also, if you look at the G7 knight, that's not going to have the C5 knight, the C8 bishop. The three minor pieces, I feel like, are not coordinating well. Yes, I agree with you completely. Uh, knight on G7 is not doing anything, and uh, it's very important that white has play um, on B and um, C file. What should black do? How can we create some sort of uh, counterattack? Because after bishop C8, it is clear that black wants to play bishop G4, and that mm -hmm. pin would be pretty annoying. So that's why an idea. Nice away. Yeah, that's a smart move to prevent the pin that Sofiko talked about. Bishop G4 can still come, but F3 would have been an option for white and chase the bishop away. So Alexandra goes for F5, which I think is very much in her style. She will not just wait for her yeah. position to be worse and worse. She wants an aggressive attacking counter chance. Even if her position is worse, she tries to create something. Bishop E3, very strong, very nice move. Just picking this knight out. Now look at the position. It's like bishop on c8, knight on d7, pawn on c7 is weak. Everything is weak and white has great knight on d2. If fe is always in white's favor, that knight e4 is, uh, would be there. f4, I think, is the one of the ways uh, Alexander should think about. But of course, for example, now, if I play f4, g takes f4. Oh, there is bishop c5 move, I think, because it seems like bishop doesn't have any squares, but after f4, uh, white could play bishop c5, and this piece is not hanging because I there is a pin. quick because of this pin. Yeah. Uh, so that is why f4 was not played, and after bishop a4, rook d8. Queen C6, such a nice technique. I really, really like it. What do I happen after Bishop C6? Though I'm still wondering because the uh, Rook B8, Rook B8, right? So Anna instead went for Queen C6. The idea is similar. Maybe she wants to take with D pawn. When maybe yeah, she, she has wants both options. Both are tempting. Yeah. Bishop takes C6, and let's see what happens after Rook B8 or D takes C6. And the knight has barely any good squares. Um, yes, this is going to be a difficult position for Alexandra to defend. Yeah. She still has more time. So the time management is definitely what Alexandra has been doing very well so far. She doesn't take on c6, but plays instead rook to b8. And now, after a couple of more moves, uh, it's speeding up 19 seconds left for Anna. We don't have much time to go into details in the variations. Oh my God. Yeah, I really like a white's position. Just only problem here is that uh, white has 17 seconds, but uh, the position looks completely winning to me because there are so many ideas, uh, so many things like knight b6. What mm -hmm. do you think? Knight I b6, c takes b6, a takes b6, and oh my God. Stop those pawns. I agree with you. That was very tempting. Now there's a trade. Both e pawns have been captured. But this knight, together with this pin on the back end, that's the most annoying. Black cannot move the bishop away from c8. She plays rook e8 to free the bishop. But still, this is going to be very difficult for Alexandra. There's this also, there's this weakness on a6. And if you lose the a6 pawn, the a5 pawn will win the game. That first pawn. Yeah. Um, I, I think that uh, Anna missed a chance to win the game directly. Uh, now it's not so easy anymore. Uh, I think knight b6 could have been the um, way. Oh my wow. god. She check. Yeah. Lost. She missed that that was the discover check winning the bishop suddenly from a better end oh. game. Anna Zatonski blunders a piece and she also lost on time, but this was about the discover yeah. check. Let's just quickly show that. She didn't realize that after bishop d5, knight c5 is the threat winning a piece. And again, Alexander Kosinuk takes the lead. Yeah, Alexander Kosinuk takes the lead with uh, a big, big blunder. But when you have 10 seconds on clock, yeah, you can miss it. You can forget that bishop is on a4. It happened and Anna will have to forget about it immediately. The next game has just started. There's no time to recover, they need to recover while they're playing the next game for one and a half hours. They will be playing this first segment. That's five minutes plus one second increment. Yeah. And this is a one point lead that we have actually seen in the prediction. It was a one point match segment. Yeah. For 
Alexandra still way to go. Yeah, and Alexandra chooses uh, the English opening, but again, once again, uh, with both G3 and B3. Uh, just the difference, uh, what she did in the first game is that the knight is not on F3, but it's now knight E to knight C3 system. Uh, I like it uh, for white because when you play against um, G3, B3 and the way black played, C5 is very typical. Uh, you want to double the pawns on the C file and then after D takes C5, uh, D takes C5, that's what happened in the game. Queen E5, does white have some kind of uh, tricky jumps? Let's say Queen E5. Knight a4, we have to be careful not to blunder the uh, bishop. And if queen goes away from uh, e7, maybe knight uh, b6. Or we can simply have, um, uh, have a pressure on c5. For example, queen e7, rook c1, or bishop a3. That looks very, very tricky. I agree with you. And... Uh... As usual, we will talk about the players in general. We have mentioned already that we have here two of the top female players in the world. Is the four-time U.S. champion, U.S. women's champion, Anna Zatonsky, facing former world champion, women's world champion, Alexandra Kostanyuk. She was the world champion among female players from 2008 to 2010. She has won basically everything that's possible to win, including Olympic gold medals with the team of Russia every single time they play European Team Championship, yeah. European Championship, Chess Olympiads, their team of Russia usually wins, and Alexandra is their top board in most of these events. Yeah, Alexandra sometimes is first board, so because the Russian team is so strong that um, you have lots of lots of players who are above 2,500, and above 2,500 for women is like really great. You get the uh, Grandmaster, Men's Grandmaster title, um, and sometimes she plays like she's world champion, she's really chess queen, and sometimes she plays on board three, sometimes board four, sometimes board one. It depends on the period. She won a lot of gold medals, also on board gold medals, mm -hmm. Olympic, European, world team, um, as well as Anna. They both actually, uh, Anna is Ukrainian. Uh, but she moved to U.S. when she was pretty, pretty uh, young. And then she got married, and now she's living in Germany uh, with uh, her husband. They both have a uh, chess player. Chess husband? Chess grandmaster husband. Yes. <laughs> um, like someone else I know. <clears throat> um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who. <laughs> I, well, don't, don't, not me. Don't, don't get me started. <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um, yeah it's it's uh, it's very interesting chess players life isn't it like you're born in ukraine she was living in u.s she was representing ukraine for a long time she even won some uh team medals then uh she uh, moved to usa she won a uh, u.s championship women's mm -hmm. championship four times and that's very very impressive because it's always very strong the uh, women's championship um and now she represents us but she lives in germany being a chess player i think is a lot of fun it is and also as we have mentioned the team results of alexandra anna has competed as you mentioned for the team of the united states for the last couple of editions yeah. of the chess olympias over well, one and a half, two decades already, I'm trying to end up the numbers. The team of US, the women's team, has won a silver, a bronze medal, and Anna on her board, she won gold medal. Both players are really good team yeah. players, we can yeah. say. Yeah, both of them. And uh, it, it's important to be not only individual player, but also uh, good in team, because uh, sometimes it, it's not only about you, and it's not only about your results. You Sometimes team result is dependent on you, and that's uh, a lot of a lot of uh, pressure. Um, speaking of team results and such, I managed to click on the wrong move, and this is the current <laughs> position. Apologies, I was not up to date with my board. Now, after Queen C4 check, this is the current position where the time situation is roughly balanced. It's good news for Anna; yeah. she has managed to speed up. But the position, let's see, Queen C4 check. Where shall the black king go? It's not easy. There's 96 coming in and yeah. 26. Is this already 
game over. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look good because where the king should go, actually, queen, king e7, queen e6, king f6, queen e6, king to g7 and f8, then knight e6, king e8 is the only way, but first, queen g8 is very smart, and then queen e6, yeah. It loses the bishop. And now it's a two-point lead for Alexandra after once again winning the bishop. Yeah. This is the theme so far yeah. that Alexandra wins the piece. That's the bishop one more time. Two-point lead for Alexandra across the new after three games. So Anna will need to bounce back in this game where she has the right pieces. Yeah, though there's a lot of time, a lot of games, though. Uh, so far, Alexandra is playing strong and um, playing on those little tactics. But um, Anna needs warm up, so we never know what uh, will happen in the match. Um, so far, so good for Alexandra. Let's say uh, Anna played again uh, d4, knight of six, and we have the um, queen's Indian. Uh, and I like to play against queen's Indian more with g3. e3 also is a very big line and um, same uh, position here with a c takes d4, knight takes d4. After dc4, now this is the moment where you don't want to take with the b pawn because uh, b6 and bishop b7 is already on board and we have bishop on uh, d3 and not on h1, a8 diagonal. So b takes c4, what I was talking about in the first game, doesn't really make sense. I yeah, think, we can just show that also there's trouble on the d5 as so before yeah. refers to that d3 bishop is hanging, so you don't want to give up the d4, knight for free. That would lose a piece. Yeah, I think uh, knight c4 is very natural, but also bishop c4 uh, comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens? Bishop c4, I think. Bishop c4, knight c6, and now a tree on c6. It's very solid so far bringing the queen to e2 to connect the rooks, they potentially will appear on d1 and c1 on the next moves. That's a very um, real tournament strategy. When you're losing two games in a row, you just want to stop the bleeding mm -hmm. and you want to play solid. If it's a draw, it's a draw, it's okay. Um, so I think it's very uh, smart what Anna is doing now. She doesn't take a lot of risks, just um, she shouldn't blunder. She shouldn't wonder. I like this queen maneuver by Alexandra. The queen will most likely end up on the long diagonal, the queen bishop battery, to put some pressure on the long diagonal and connect the rooks as well. Yeah, it is indeed nice. Though after B queen b7, I think uh, white can leave the knight on f3. So we can play, let's say, rook d1, because knight e5 is not anyway possible. g2 pawn is hanging. Uh, but I don't think it would be nice for black to take on f3 because after g takes f3, I really like that white would have two bishops, open g file, and it doesn't really matter that black ruins uh, white's pawn structure. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that white shouldn't be afraid of bishop takes f3 and doubling the pawns. Therefore, Alexander doesn't even mind uh, whether she wants to take or not, it will be in the air. It's good to have this queen bishop battery because of the pressure on the g2 point, right. but simply she wants to trade rooks on the d5 and equalize because overall, this is a game where she has the black pieces, two point lead in the match. She doesn't need to force issues in this game. Yeah, only thing that bothers me for white is that black can easily keep the bishop out. So b5 is always kind of in the air. So, uh, to me, a4 comes as a logical move, but I don't want to give up the very important b4 uh, square because not only bishop can get there, but after knight d5, knight b4 might be annoyed. This is a nice solution uh, against b5, bishop a6, and just to get rid of this uh, queen on b5 mm -hmm. and not to worry about b5 anymore. A3 is a smart move. We, we make sure that there will be no background problems, takes away the g4 square as well, multi-purpose move, but still the trades come on the d5, and the question will be whether white can put up some fight here to build on the tension with a slight edge, but Anna would need to bounce back and try to win this game. Yeah. Um, it is difficult <laughs> uh, with this uh, position. It, it is really difficult um, because there is nothing wrong with black's position. 
uh, and I I can feel the pressure that you really want to win it, but position should allow, right? <laughs> yes, this will most likely lead to a draw. But we have seen big mistakes. Anna had the first game she lost. She was pressing, trying to win that. And then it was a one more blunder that eventually gave the point to Alexandra. So in this chess, anything can happen. And down to two and a half minutes, Alexandra once again ahead in time. They can repeat moves here and yeah. drop. They even have already made it bishop c4, queen e4, bishop d3, queen d5. That was a very objective draw. Yeah. It's but still it an hour left, an hour left from the match. Anna has abandoned her seat for a moment, but she is, she came back real quick. Of course, they can do whatever they like in their time. No one stops the clock. So yeah. if you want to go to the bathroom, your time will be running. She will need to be very quick. But I think her two kids are at home. So yeah. maybe that she needed to help them. Oh, I understand that very <laughs> much. Now, world number four is busy with my little one. <laughs> Would you like to tell us a story how we started today's show? We were about to go live today, and then the world number four, aka Grandmaster Anish Giri, just knocked on the door quietly, <laughs> looked in if we have started already, or she, or he could still get some help from his wife because apparently there was well, an guess, issue. <laughs> guess, guess what was the reason? <laughs> the yeah. baby. Yeah, well, he didn't want to change the diaper, just. <laughs> but I love broadcast because <laughs> I'm, I just think, like, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I'm just going live in, like, two minutes when it's actually five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so because you made it here and we just tricked. <laughs> we focus on the show. Anish takes care of the baby. And yeah. this is how it should be right now because you are broadcasting. The top match of the day that is between Alexander Kostinin and Anna Zatansky. Both of them exactly. are mothers and professional chess players. Yeah, I was telling Anish actually that he should hurry up from what kind of uh, Grand Prix in Moscow, the knockout system. It was very good for me, the knockout system. So I was like, okay, hurry up. I have chess from live. So you have to babysit with Daniel. <laughs> good point. Also, let's remind everybody that we will choose one more time the moment of the day, which is the best quip. Please make sure that whenever you see a moment in the show, a very exciting moment of the game or something funny, interesting that happened during the broadcast, clip it and send it to us. I think by clipping it, probably we'll see it anyway. But if you tweet it, even better, use the hashtag speeches to answer the question of the day and also to send us your clips because we will choose the best clip for the moment of the match that will be shown right before the bullet portion. Yeah, and actually it's very important that you share ideas with us because uh, Chesscom is doing everything uh, we take uh, into consideration, what you think, what viewers want to see, how can we grow women's chess, so please do that. And now back to the game. That was actually first, one, first E4 by um, Alexandra, mm -hmm. it was Petra. The line uh, which we had Petra with uh, Knight of Six is not very uh, the most popular, let's say so. But um, as I've seen, Anna is playing a lot of uh, Petra recently, mm -hmm. and she always uh, likes to go back with the um, Knight. I also used to play Pet Petra for Blitz. I uh, prefer it only for Blitz because otherwise, you know, I keep oil to my uh, neither. Um, and it's pretty interesting. It looks like um, the, you don't have space and mm -hmm. uh, you have like, you have limited squares where to put your, um, where to put your pieces. But what you have to remember if you want to pay Petra, play Petra is the E file. E file is very important uh, because the position is pretty close. All fight goes on E file, and whoever has it either has the initiative or uh, equalizes. I agree with you fully. Now the knight had to come back from F5 since it lost the support of the bishop because of this knight E4 move, and black has the possibility of either taking on G3 or on D2. Right. And after knight G3, I think best is i would still take it on g3 mm -hmm. because after fg at least e3 square could be slightly weak but what white gets for it is that the knight on g6 looks pretty silly now 
because of the h for f for uh, squares, right? It cannot go anywhere. Therefore, and is thinking whether to take on g3 or take on d2. It's an important moment. It makes sense that she's using more time. And if you guys haven't seen it before, she is wearing a chess.com t-shirt and a note on the t-shirt that is for her student. The student of Anna has his or her birthday. We need to ask more about the well, student after the match is over, but it's a very nice gesture from Anna to it is a greet. The yeah. student exactly and um it's really nice i really i would really love to have uh, such coach really i'm honest <laughs> yeah she didn't take neither on g3 nor on d2 but defended the knight with d5 that was the third option and that opens up the diagonal of the bishop too so she can activate the fa bishop later yeah i like d5 um because if now white takes knight e4 d takes e4 that would be uh, very annoying for white because then f5 we can play and we can strengthen the uh, center uh, central pawn uh, queen e1 is very logical uh, now it forces actually black to take decision does uh, she really wants to have the knight on e4 and play f5 or trade uh, everything as it happened in the game bishop d6 this looks very nice in sense that uh, uh, because of d5, black won a lot of tempi mm -hmm. with bishop d6 and rook e8 very fast. And probably this will be also a solid draw. I think it is heading toward the draw, as you mentioned, after the multiple trades, this position is rather simple and there's not much to play for. The, the chess queen is aiming to create some tension i like this g4 bishop f5 idea because if bishop takes f5 g takes f5 the knight is struggling you will need to go back to for instance e7 this is what we are going to see so there's some space advantage and some pressure on the king side for alexandra who is two points up in the match yeah and actually um when she was asked like how she would prepare when alexandra was asked in the pre-match interview, how she would prepare for the match, what would be most difficult. She um, uh, said that um, just sitting there in front of computer and playing for three hours can be uh, challenging because mm -hmm. it's a very long match and you play a lot of games, but just to be there online for three hours, um, it, it is very challenging and I agree with her. That's why probably uh, they need snacks, right? Oh, and we've seen some. We've seen uh, Alexandra having some cookies, uh, and I'm interested when is the moment when she's going to use the cookies, when she needs the energy. So far, she's, she's just uh, not taking anything, and she's very focused uh, on the uh, game and moves, but I'm really... Uh, looking forward to see the moment when she gets tired. <laughs> Indeed, both players are very well prepared and they have brought their chocolates too. I see the chocolate emote in the chat. Welcome everybody just joining us on Chess TV and on Twitch. Obviously, we are monitoring the chat, but we can't really type in the chat. I have sometimes tried to spam emotes and I'm going to prove I'm there by using my very own emotes, uh, so plugging my <laughs> own channel. But yes, we are monitoring the chat, so make sure to talk to us on chess tv and on twitch let us know about your opinion about this match who are you rooting for and also please remember the question of the day and the clips that we are waiting for yeah please do and we have pretty equal uh end game there is probably not much to talk about because uh, everything is closed and alexandra is trying to uh, get some pawn trades to create some weaknesses and that's a very smart way but i think anna will ha hold it pretty easily just the thing is that we see that alexandra he has a great time management while anna is having always some seconds on the clock 70 seconds left for the four-time U.S. champion. This is problematic in the sense that, once again, she's down on time. It's a defendable end game, but Alexandra has the pressure and two and a half minutes left. Now, B5, and she will have to face some questions, whether there's a, a breakthrough. Yeah. And the knight is a tricky piece. Yeah, now I don't like what happened because uh, a knight B4 was easily allowed, and now king comes to D4. I was even going to say that there were some ideas with 
95, F takes 5 D takes 5 but that's even better. Uh, what happened uh, for white here? Uh, this looks really, really bad. Three, two. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh, Anna is in serious time pressure. And yeah. now this is going to be still difficult with the weakness on d5. She had managed to prevent king d4. So yeah. a5 was a really smart move. But with three seconds on the clock versus two minutes, this isn't looking good for Anna. This is not, but uh, position got uh, simplified. Now after knight c6, there is knight e5, and we shouldn't forget that white also has a weak pawn and g4, and if black manages to take that pawn, uh, she will create herself the passer. So um, I think Alexandra has to be a bit careful as well. It's not only that you're looking at your uh, uh, opponent's clock, which happens it is a pretty uh usual mistake it happened several times uh to me that a while opponent has uh while opponent is in time trouble you're trying to uh play as fast as possible and that's a big mistake when you have time you have to use it because when your opponent is in time trouble she's more focused she sees um the tactics uh better i think better than you Anna has made a move with one second left. I'm oh, about yeah. to get a heart attack. They are repeating moves though. So if this is going to be the third time that King D4, Knight F3 is played, that it is a draw. Yeah. And Alexandra goes for it. Wow. One second left on the clock when Anna went for this variation. It is an escape from a difficult situation in terms of the time situation, at least. Yeah. It is, and next game we have Nimso Indian. Um, so we see a lot of different openings. It's, uh, we don't have thematic match uh, today as we had in the first uh, match of uh, Danielian uh, um, Lachno. It was really impressive that we had theme of two bishops, uh, but we see here several openings, and, um, but uh, still very thematic in these matches that we see a lot of fiancatos, right? Like b6, Queen's Indian or g3. Um, Alexandra and both, I think, Anna, they like to put their bishop uh, on D b2, like sometimes b4, b3, bishop b2 happens um, a lot of times. It's true, the fianchetto <coughs> bishop we have seen, even the double fianchetto with g3, bishop g2, b3, bishop b2, those have been some of the themes of the day. And two times we have seen a piece blunder unfortunately for Anna Zatonsky that was yeah. the case in two of the games that were decided in terms of the openings they have been switching I'm still waiting for the French defense I, I thought there would be many French defense Anna yeah. Zatonsky played the French and Alexandra often goes for 1e4 but so far we are not seeing that coming if you want to follow Alexandra by the way she of course has her own Twitch channel she streams often on chess.com over your mouse over the screen if you are watching from a PC, then you will be able to follow her channel. I believe my channel is also there. Don't click on my channel, click on Alexandra's channel. That's my request. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, actually, as we mentioned, Alexandra is playing soon in Candidates Tournament, uh, which starts like uh, at 29th. So today is 26th in three days. And another psychological moment is that she has to be careful not to show what she prepared for the candidates mm -hmm. tournament. Because if she plays everything uh, that um, she prepared for the candidates, of course, opponents are watching. And of course, they are following this match uh, and um, just looking what openings is Ale uh, Alexandra using. So she has uh, a bit of difficulties, I think, that is why we don't we see more of offbeat lines mm -hmm. with g3, fianchetto, b3, bishop b2, uh, rather than uh, main lines with e4 and d4 and c4. I agree with you. This since Alexandra mentioned in the <laughs> pre-match interview that we had with her, that her main focus obviously is the candidates tournament. It's starting in just a few days on the 29th of May in Kazan, the eight-player field. For the first time, there's a women's candidates tournament for the World Chess Championship. And that's, of course, one of the most important events yes. for a female player in order to become world champion. She was already the world champion between 2008 and 2010, but right. that doesn't mean she doesn't want to repeat. Of course. 
she is very competitive and uh, she has ambitions to come back to get uh, back her crown. She's doing a lot of things uh, for that. And actually, in our field, we have a lot of players from a candidates mm -hmm. tournament. We will have soon Valentina Guninas match, who is also the participant of uh, the candidates tournament. So we uh, we are doing really great things, like having the speed chess uh, championship, having all this, um, I mean, chess com, <laughs> all these um, great players. Mm -hmm. And it's just great to see that they compete each other in this. So that's some of the events to look forward to. And as for the Women's Beach Chess Championship, this is the second match. Remember that this is the first time that Chess.com organizes the Women's Beach Chess Championship. Yes. $20,000 on the line and the winner will qualify to the overall Speech Chess Championship that's going to be this summer. The winner will move on to the next round. So as you know, this is the knockout system. Second match, and we will have two more matches to see who are the players that will make it to the quarterfinals. Yeah, and what we have on the board, it looks slightly pleasant for uh, white. Look at this beautiful B file. Uh, we just need rook B1, and <laughs> <laughs> it will be uh, completely full. But I like white's position uh, because of the B2 bishop. I think it's better uh, placed, though what white should be careful uh, with is the B4 pawn. And Alexandra is using it very nicely. The bishop E7 and the knight on uh, C6, they are both now um, um, attacking the B4 pawn. And how to defend it? I don't really see a good way to defend that pawn. Bishop a3 would be the only move I can spot, but uh, the bishop on a3 is questionable. Yeah, also rook a4 can be an option for black uh, to put more pressure on uh, b4 pawn. And I really, really dislike it. Maybe we should just ignore it and play something like knight h... No, knight h5? I cannot play because knight h5 and I would just plunder a whole piece as there is no... Uh, g7, queen g7 mate. So e4 sure was do? played after knight c6, allowing knight c Wait a second. Oh, e4. Oh, oh, the bishop. Very, the bishop. very, very cool move. Okay, we completely forgot that knight c6, even though we were focusing on the b4 pawn, so apologies, but we were so impressed with this attack that we forgot that the bishop it still has a square. Right. If you move the bishop, the c6 knight is unprotected. Yeah. Tactics here. And this will mean that Black had to give up the minor piece on d5, and she will give up a second minor piece on c1. So it's going to be the fight of a rook versus two minor pieces. Yeah, though uh, we know that two minor pieces in most cases are best. Um, and also I think that uh, after knight a2, queen d2, knight c1, there is, a, um, there is an intermediate move, d6 instead of taking rook c1 and allowing knight d5. Mm -hmm. Not now. Oh, our queen is yeah, I, I was going to move the queen. I thought I moved yeah. it. <laughs> Let me move it. Where shall we move it now? Yes, queen f3. Yeah, queen f3 happens. Sorry, and I the meant king. to move it, but I wanted to show that you don't want to move it to b3 because that will allow the capture with an attack. You want to move it to a square yeah. that doesn't allow knight takes c1 with the attack over the queen and then so because idea will work so one more time it was e4 capture knight a2 and the queen went over to f3 knight takes d1 d6 this is exactly what sopico was talking about intermediate move very important threatening d takes e7 and now white takes back on c1 yeah i like it for white because also of a very strong d6 pawn that's the main point uh, of the position and two minor pieces so it looks uh, good for Anna. Maybe this is the game where she can really come back. Maybe this is the one. What do you think? I think so too. The d6 pass one is extremely strong. White pieces are very active. She will, of course, still need to find the most precise way to play how to put even more pressure on Alexandra and use her time better. It's 54 seconds left for Anna. We have seen her struggle in most of the games in terms of time management. And this trade on d5, is this something that White wanted that much? Um, yeah, maybe. If we look at Alexandra, though, um, if we look at her, she's very expressive mm -hmm. also with her emotions. Um, and uh, when she doesn't like something, I've mm -hmm. noticed from real games and real tournaments, because I've seen her a lot of times, mm -hmm. um, 
she kind of takes a deep breath and she's like, <laughs> like this. It, yeah. it, I think it helps very much uh, to take off the pressure. Um, I was always told when um, the when um, I was preparing for tournaments and when I was keyed that um, if you don't want to plunder and you have pressure and you just just look around, take three seconds before the very important decision, then take a deep breath and make a move. I think that's a very good tip. So use breathing techniques in order to calm yourself down because you don't want to make a quick decision with a, a nervous, anxious, or upset state of mind. Yeah. In terms of the position, White has won already, one form with this 97 check that was very nicely played. You don't want to take this night because that will create a monster and uh, even more material would have been lost. Right. That's why Alexander had to give up the pawn on the five. And what we see in the current position is that White has two minor pieces against the rook. Normally, a rook and a pawn equals two minor pieces. So yes. Three plus three, the two minor pieces. Five plus one, a rook and a pawn. Here, as if in this position, White had a pawn up, that would be the material balance. Right, and I always prefer to have uh, two minor pieces, though one thing that uh, one should remember is that it's uh, tricky in end games when it, you can allow to have two minor pieces for rook and maybe two or three pawns. Uh, and it's in um, middle game where you might have attack. It's very dangerous to have uh, to, to play against mm -hmm. two minor pieces. You should not allow it in the end game because usually uh, end game is very tricky because rooks are somehow uh, stronger than mm -hmm. two minor pieces if, of course, uh, black has enough pawns. What happened here is that uh, there was a trade and another pawn was uh, gone, but now two pieces. Just, just for the record, we have to remind ourselves that you cannot trade everything and be uh, up with two knights because yes. that's a draw. Indeed. And now, after winning one rook, it is still some work to do because of what Sopiko mentioned. If you only have one knight at the end, or even two knights, two knights can't win the game. So it's a full piece up for Anna Zatonsky. This is the so far the biggest advantage that she has had during the games of this match. Yeah, but she still has to work her race with 18 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, and important here is not to trade all pawns because then it's nearly impossible to uh, win the game. Though Anna did it, Anna uh, uh, did win the game uh, in Olympiad with Rook and knight versus rook i also did it <laughs> in a very very Good important uh, match at, at world championship but normally normally black doesn't lose right mm -hmm. but this looks completely winning because there are pawns on the board and once the pawns advance there is no way black can defend it now for example g7 is lost yes this is a very nice maneuver putting pressure on the seventh rank and then bringing in the knight after winning the g7 pawn, this position is completely winning, and therefore Alexander resigns because it does matter that you have more time for the yeah. rest of the game. Smart strategy by chess queen. Yes, resigning was a smart. That's that's a very unique thing <laughs> when resigning. Yes, yeah, normally <laughs> don't fight until the very end, but this is a very special format, and the format is that they have half an hour left from the segment that is five minutes plus one second as time control. Yeah. Alexandra has a one point lead now, but she wants to keep that lead and increase that lead. So she needs to play more and more and more games where she's not a piece down. Right, and that gives actually uh, a lot of uh, confidence boost to uh, the one who is down on um, uh, score uh, because it's like, okay, you won, you want to uh, won win one more and then there is a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to the one who is actually leading. And we have Carlsbad. We have Carlsbad uh, on the board. I really like it. I play this um, line, though I'm not uh, castling uh, so fast. I usually play queen c2 first, and then I decide what to do with the king. Maybe I want to castle long side, which was uh, the line I was using, and then g4, h4. Mm -hmm. um, or this is uh, the way also, another way to uh, deal with this line with uh, knight e5 and f4. And as far as I know, when white achieves knight f4, 
e5, f4, then white has slight advantage. I like it a lot, of course, this knight is very strong on e5, the bishop on h6, putting all pressure on the king side, and f5, this push, which will weaken the black king side. You don't really want to see this kind of pawn structure yeah. in front of your king. No. Yeah, you don't want to see, and after f5, knight f5 is, of course, possibility with... Uh, uh, maybe exchange sacrifice is possible. Knight f5, bishop f5, bishop f5, rook f5, uh, and g takes f5, queen f5. There's a lot of thing, things going on because king is very weak and there is direct uh, threat of mates now with queen g5, queen g7, and f file is open, knight on e5 is a beast. So after f5, I think Anna should not touch the... Um, the pawn on f5. I agree with you that this exchange sacrifice is very interesting on f5. Of course, the players are allowed to stand up. We have already mentioned is that they can always go to the bathroom, grab a glass of water from the kitchen, or help their kids because they both are <laughs> mothers. <laughs> so as long as the time is running, they cannot stop, of course, the time. There's no such thing as, hey, time out. <laughs> but they can do whatever they wish with their time. They do, but the position is so tense that I think both players will be sitting very nicely on their chairs, focusing on their uh, screens. Now, for example, knight f7 can be can be a problem. Could it be knight f7, king f7, f takes uh, g6, and then we also take the h7 pawn. I think it's could very have been tempting, very interesting. Very tempting. I agree with you, but we will not have time to analyze it much because f takes is on the board and h takes g6, giving up the f7 pawn happened anyway. That means that Anna was very scared of something in this position after f takes g6. Maybe bishop g6, but bishop g6 anyway would happen. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm struggling to understand what would happen because. If there is any sacrifice on g6, then it would anyway happen mm -hmm. with f pawn or h pawn. Um, I don't know. Yes, what we are trying to understand here is why Anna felt the need to take with the h pawn, give up the f7 pawn, allowing this capture and the attack over her queen. If f takes g6 instead would have been played, it still looks bad for black. We are not saying that we like black's position. Right. It's probably already very problematic there can be potential sacrifices on g6 knight f7 is anyway an option or rook to f7 but we will not know the exact reason since this isn't anymore the game position takes and knight takes f7 and i will come back to the board and make a move there aren't many squares for the queen yeah i think i think that's um uh family life because Anna has two kids and we've seen that while uh, playing Blitz online Anna is leaving the board and already maybe she uh, thinks that she doesn't have nice position so uh, it, 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 she can get up and um, take like 30 seconds to do what she has to do. She has brought a hoodie with herself before she was sporting the chess.com t-shirt and a greeting for a student of hers. It's the birthday of a student of Anna. That was the note on her T-shirt. But it seems that it's a bit chilly in Germany. Yeah. And now she's wearing a St. Louis hoodie. Yeah, we also need one. Eh? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we have kind of same weather uh, conditions. But the match is so exciting that I'm not cold. <laughs> and the position, it's heating up. But... It's heating up in the very wrong way for Anna Zatonsky. Yeah. Two pawns down, and now the exchange is falling as well, and Bishop is still picking up the queen. Game over. And Alexandra is laughing. She she just, just burst in love now. Indeed. I wonder what exactly is that she's so, because normally just because she has made a winning move, she wouldn't start celebrating. It must be something yeah. else. Yeah, and she, ha she, she has a big smile on her face. Can you imagine, like, husband is uh, in front of her and he's just uh, cheering her, like, come on, Alexandra, oh, great move, let's go for it, King's attack. <laughs> so <laughs> Live commentary. Who knows, both of these players we mentioned already have chess player husbands, grandmasters. Yeah. 
I'm not. I'm not saying. It. I'm not <laughs> saying that. She's no, cheating. No, I didn't mean that. No, <laughs> no, no. I just mean in a funny way that yeah. uh, she, she was laughing, and um, you you can have some funny comments from your husband, not not relating to chess. Indeed. I just want to give a quick shout out to Chess Gremlin, and also I see another lately that was Ethel Tappy. If I have missed bits any not donations apologies we i don't have another tab to look at the notifications but we do appreciate each and every support whether it's bits donations subscriptions or simply the fact that you are here with us sharing this moment witnessing an epic match between the former women's world champion Alexandra Kostenyuk and the four-time u.s champion Anna Zatonsky this is just the beginning of the match it is it is because we still have 26 minutes left for five plus one uh, portion and then we will have three plus one for another 60 minutes and uh, half an hour for bullets. That should be very, very exciting. I think that Anna won't be able to get up while when it During is during a bullet game. Yeah, bullet game, so kids should really behave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. B5, what do you think of this move, Sophie? B5, that's uh, very aggressive a move because bishop b5 is tempting but after rook b8 we would open the b file and queen b6 and suddenly out of nowhere uh white king might be in danger as well as black's uh play is easier because he, sh she takes the initiative on the queen side and um yeah afterwards it might be anna who should be thinking of defense and that's why Anna goes for knight g5 instead. It's an opposite side costing position and both players will aim for the opponent's king. The king is the objective of the game, but in opposite side costing, it happens immediately. You go for a pawn storm, you sacrifice pieces, pawns, whatever you can to get your attack going. Exactly. That usually happens in uh, Sicilian positions very much. So I'm very much used to this um, opposite costing. And uh, I am the one who is who has the castle on the queen, king side. Uh, and playing against queenside castle. So these uh, moves like b5, rook b8, b4, and so on is kind of very uh, typical for such positions. Only problem here for black is that it's not so easy to open with b4 as white has c4. And then uh, if everything is blocked, white has free hand on uh, the king side. So instead she pushes in the center. That's not... That's simple because it weakens the c5 pawn and also the d5. White has both the queen and the rook on the d5. c4 now to get in this move, b4. The d5 pawn is protected thanks to the knight. So it may be just in time. Black's attack is way more advanced than white's attack. We see that the white pawn will need to be pushed two squares right. just to get in touch with the g pawn. Yeah, and that will, and that's actually where uh, we have to pay attention how nicely... Uh, uh, Alexandra got some sort of attack on the queen side because d5 you would think that okay where what what does she plan but her plan was very clear with d5 c4 and b4 otherwise without d5 b4 wouldn't be possible because c4 pawn would be hanging um, so some uh, clear play uh, black has on uh, the queen side but I still think that it's not very dangerous because of this bishop on d4, which is protecting the important c3 squares, so in case of b takes c3, bishop takes c3, exactly. or queen takes c3 to trade the queen. So far, Anna is defending the queen side. And if the queen side is defended, then she can go on with her king side attack. Yeah, h5, g4, h6, though it would be also uh, difficult for her to create something, because uh, after h5, h6 is possibility for black to stop it. But that's kind of provocation because if you play h5, h6, then white's uh, attempt to create some attack on the king side would be easier because knight h3, g4, g5 uh, would be already a big threat. I agree with you that the g5 knight, even though it's putting pressure on the h7 square, is in the way of the g4. And we shall see how Anna will continue. Once again, she is using more time than Alexandra. We have seen the time management being better for the chess queen she has been doing very well she speeds up even in first positions yeah now anna still has one and a half minutes which is 
still better than 10 or 20 seconds. <laughs> but she'll have to come up with something. And this is a critical moment. She has to make a serious decision about the next couple of moves, not just the one move that she will play right now. Yeah, and actually it's a um, very interesting position. Like, should you ignore everything and just go H5, G4 right away? Or uh, should you uh, do some kind of prophylactic moves and maneuvers like let's say king a1 uh comes to mind um and any other but she she goes for g4 which mm -hmm. i think is uh, pretty logical it is logical and she can decide to move the knight later it's a bit sad if you need to go to h3 so i guess she's waiting whether that would be a better chance you wish you could just take a bishop on e6 and then push but for now, it is a move that takes away the f5 square as well from the black bishop in case, yeah. and starts the pawn storm. We shall see whether black can continue. If this is paralyzed because of the bishop taking on c3 or queen takes c3, Alexandra will have to come up with something as b3 is another option. Right, and just to remind our viewers, uh, it's nice to be a pawn grabber and free pawns we love free yes, stuff, free stuff. <laughs> we do love it but uh the thing is in this position is that if we take on f6 and after bishop f6 bishop f6 we take on d5 uh even if we are not losing the c3 pawn right away uh it would be very difficult for uh white then to defend the dark squares this dark square bishop is defending everything on queen side so then you don't have uh, any danger um and you shouldn't do it like just for the sake of one pawn you shouldn't do it even even though this even position in, even is in, not in, the, one. It was not yeah. in the uh, position that's what topic was saying that if it was once again well i was gonna say if it was once again my turn yeah because bishop takes c4 b takes c3 just by principle, you don't really want to give up this strong bishop from d4, which is attacking and defending at the same time yeah. for one isolated pawn. Well, isolated in the sense that it's, it's a backward pawn. I was going to say backward pawn. Yeah. It will be isolated if the c4 pawn is off of the board. The current position in the game is this one after queen d2. Unless you're not mating on h7, you shouldn't take on f6. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, so Alexandra is actually leading with two points right now so this game is pretty decisive it is with 20 minutes left from this segment and i will need to make a comeback there's a trade on c3 and bishop b4 threatening bishop takes c3 remember there's a pin on the b5 so you can't take back on c3 with the queen right and i i've seen um in chat that um, uh, most of you like black black's position here though i ooh, ooh, yep, yeah that's a queen it, yep that's well, that's it <laughs> this has been another blunder by anna she already has suffered a defeat a peace blunder because of a discovered attack and this is another one that we will show very quickly she took on g6 forgetting about the queen side and the queen on d2 hanging this was game over if king c1 rook b1 check would have won the queen anyway another point for alexander three point lead yeah uh, another point and she has three point lead that was not expected nope. that much nope. not, not from all. the uh also not from the predictions uh that we've announced it was just one point lead in the five uh, minute segment indeed the smarter chess prediction the stats for this match uh, was showing advantage for alexander but the yeah. five plus one portion is where we predicted that anna would be doing very good and it would be just a one point difference between the two players yeah though we have to say that uh alexandra is the favorite with the rating points as mm -hmm. well and uh she she has played a lot of bleeds in her life and i think it's very important that alexandra has a lot of chess going on now at this moment in her life because she is preparing for the candidates tournament indeed alexandra is a professional chess player so is anna but this is a different stage of their yes. career where Alexandra is playing some of the top events and for that she has to have you know how many hours put in every yeah. day serious chess preparation plus she streams and she plays online very often while Anna doesn't play that much this is of course an advantage when you face an online competition that you have way more experience playing on chess.com 
Yeah, and it's a very usual question um, asked to me, like, what do you think is the ideal amount of time you should put in chess if you want to become a grandmaster? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't have a response for that. I think that is very individual and um, uh, like who can do what because uh, chess is not only that you study books and solve tactics, play online mm -hmm. and so on, but it's also pretty, um, uh, you have to be physically fit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am really interested how these girls, professionals are taking, uh, what kind of amount of time are they um, uh, putting in chess? Because it's seen that both of them are uh, very competitive. They are professional chess players, so they have to work very hard. I know that Alexandra is uh, paying a lot of attention to sports. So. She does. She often goes jogging. Even during tournaments, yeah. you would see her coming back to the hotel of the the event in jogging clothes. Yeah, you would see always during the tournaments that she takes uh, morning uh, jogs and she's like very sportive. She's very much uh, in shape. And I think when you have two or more kids, that's also some sort of gym, right? <laughs> At home. <laughs> Definitely. We're talking about Anna. They have two kids with the master Friedman and as husband. We mentioned that both Alexandra and uh, Anna have chess families. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> um, I don't know who else is in a similar situation. So we may know more about how is it with a grandmaster right, husband, right. how much it helps your chess. How much it does not have, I don't know. Is this an advantage if you have a grandmaster husband? Well, it's definitely is because whenever I <laughs> I play something, I'm like, oh, <laughs> can you tell me what's going on here? Can you tell me what's going on there? But I think it's also advantage for them, for professional chess players, because uh, we understand why they are sitting in front of computers for eight hours, why they are uh, always like... Uh, moving the wooden pieces and I think uh, it's very nice to understand what your another half is up to. Indeed, I agree with you. That's why we see many of the professional chess players getting right. married to other chess players. It's a common thing. Chess couples. Yeah. Yes. Chess couples. I'm still waiting for the world championship for chess couples, but let's get back to this position after 9G3. It's quite solid. That's why we were not focusing on it much. The position is balanced. Alexandra with the white piece is heading for the f5 square with her knight. The other knight can jump to e5. So some slight pressure is that Alexandra is building up c5. Anna, in this situation, I think she does what she should. She needs to spice up the position, even if it's quite an equal dull position. Right. And c5 creates an isolated form, but allows an attack over the diagonal for sure. Though it's very difficult to uh, say exactly when is the time to really go all in because uh, we still have um, three plus one segments ahead and bullet match uh, ahead. So is it the moment where you have to go all in because you're down three points or you can play normal solid chess and then see what happens and how it goes? Yeah, good question. After bishop b5 and queen f5, this is becoming more and more complicated for Anna with the pressure over the d5 pawn. And she accepted to have that isolated pawn. Yeah. And this queen around the king side, I wouldn't be happy about it. Also, the knights are too close. Yeah, I agree with you completely. The only thing that I like for black is the move bishop c4, and that's very nice to get rid of the isolated pawn uh, on d5. But uh, we've, we see that uh, after queen c2, it's not so easy uh, to get rid of the uh, isolated pawn. And um, as a rule, we know that when you have isolated pawn, you shouldn't try to trade pieces. True. This would, bishop takes c4, d takes c4 would allow the pawn structure of black becoming somewhat better. There will be no isolated pawn, but the capture here, as Sopika said, alone is not something that black is interested in. And now the knight on d4 is very well placed. That's how you should place your minor pieces when you are playing against the isolated pawn. The d4 pawn, the square in front of the isolated pawn is a great outpost. Yeah, it is. And after queen f5, now the f4 uh, knight has uh, problems. Like, should it go back 
probably because there is no other square, though Anna goes for bishop b3. Mm, I don't like that very much because uh, knight on d4 is very strong and black still has problem uh, what to do with the knight. Um, another, just white has just one bad piece, sort mm -hmm. of bad piece, uh, in the position which is g3 knight. And with queen b1, this knight will join uh, into join the game with knight g f5. It looks very nice for white. I agree with you, the knight, the two knights coordinating very well, the rook is strong on the e5, and on the third knight, it might appear on g3 in the future. Now, white is doubling heavy pieces on the open e5. Everything is looking great for Alexandra, and she has a three-point lead. I just remind everybody that this is the very final moments, a few more games, and we will be done with this time control, five plus one. There will be one or two more games, depending on how long those games will last. And it's a three-point lead for the former world champion. Yeah, I'm impressed the way uh, White plays. Uh, she wants to uh, use all advantages, all squares, though. I would think that it would be nicer, um, but I think Alexander knows better. I just think that it would be nicer to uh, have the knight on f5 already and then maybe think of rook g3 or I even thought of some ideas like g4, but with queens on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, now, not very much because after knight f5, rook g3, there is knight e6, uh, good defense. And I think that things uh, became easier for black. I agree with you. I didn't really like Alexander's decision of going for queen takes c5, the simplification that connected the pawn, the d and uh, b pawns, now hanging pawns on d5 and c5. And this rook a8, a4, very important by Anna Zatonsky to get rid of the a pawn as weakness. And now this rook is more active than the white rook. The king is controlling important squares. This is now turning tables. There's a threat, knight takes c3 because of the pin on the second rank. Yeah, and we see uh, how expressive Alexandra is. She is uh, shaking her head and she uh, she made her eyes open wide. Uh, she is not happy with the decision and she clearly understood that she missed something and from a very good position she now uh, gave up the initiative. Yes, this is a difficult moment for Alexandra when the tendency is not the one you are looking for. Yeah. She had the pressure, she had a slightly better position, and now suddenly she has to be defending. Doesn't mean that her position is bad, and she still has more than two minutes. So her time management is, once again, incredibly well done. It is Anna who gets into time trouble every single game, 22 seconds left for the US champion, four-time US champion, nice C4, and she shall react very quickly, 16 seconds. Oh, yeah. H4, though, is a nice move um, because then well, Black would get some uh, squares on the king side, but uh, it is pawn. It or is a pawn. White. Even if they are isolated, it is still a free stuff pawn. Knight have 4 to put pressure on the H3 pawn, but it is this extra pawn that uh, will make this position difficult to defend for Anna. The B pass pawn especially is the problem. Yeah, and now I think in this match we see how important it is uh, to have correct time management because yes, both players are very strong, but when you have good position, you still need these seconds to take correct decision. We've seen that uh, from initiative, uh, Black had uh, because I think because of the time pressure, um, Anna ended up to be pawned down in this uh, game. And now she could take the h4 pawn, but the b pawn is running. So if you had taken on h4 with the rook or the king, b6, b7, and the pawn was unstoppable, she is aiming for the b a square to block the pawn. That's the only way, but this is looking bad if you have to place your knight on b8. It does, because knight on d6 is great. Uh, it's really... Uh, Defends the b7 pawn and after rook c8. Oh, she's gonna play. Oh my god. That's it. But the yeah. position, to be fair, the position is lost already because of rook c8 and the pawn will promote or you lose the knight. Yeah, it is. Four points lead for uh, chess queen. Indeed, Alexander is doing extremely well for this first segment that was supposed to be the closest according to our smarter chess predictions. Well, sometimes we fail with the stats. 
but it's exciting chess. We did not fail with that prediction. Yes, this may be the last game or the last but one game in the 5 plus 1 portion, depending on the length of this game. Yeah, it depends on if things go bad again for Anna, then she should be smart to resign faster to have mm -hmm. one more possibility uh, to play the game. Though it is very difficult um, to bounce back in this match, but I have a feeling that a uh, 3 plus 1 will should go better for mm -hmm. um, Anna, um, and we will see much more ups and downs, quite possibly. And so far, this is an opening that could lead to anything. White has a pleasant position with the Fianca to the bishop, the knight on d4, fighting against the Isaiah of pawn. So this game could go in favor of Anna even then. Even if she wins this game, it will still be a three-point difference, but at least that gives you a confidence boost. Yeah. And that's so needed in chess. It's about the psychology too. It is. It is very much about the psychology. When you feel good, the game goes good as well. Mm -hmm. And when you feel prepared, I think uh, in chess, it's very important to feel that you're prepared and it doesn't matter. It happens on the board or not, but you feel that you did some work before uh, the game. It's very, very important. Knight e4, after knight e4, I think there might be some ideas connected with c4, mm -hmm. but I think it's better first to prepare it and not play it directly. Um, though, if you give time to black, then bishop f6, rook c8. If rook c8, rook c4 happens, it won't be easy for uh, white. So maybe, maybe it is time to go c4 right now. I agree with you that that pawn is a pawn that you want to get rid of. This is a weakness. And also we shall see what's going to happen on the wrong diagonal. It is once in a moment where Anna is taking more time. She has been playing slower all these games. We emphasized already that Alexandra Kostanyuk has been doing an amazing job with time management every single time. Even in the difficult position she yeah. had, she kept on playing quickly, which is good heading into the three plus one portion where you have even less time yeah and i think we've we really believe that uh alexander's favorite time is time control is three plus one because we see that she has five minutes but at the end of the game she always has like two minutes left on the clock mm -hmm. the knight on f5 is usually a very nicely placed piece because it's so close to the opponent's king and takes away important squares from your opponent's pieces. Not easy to get rid of this knight to chase it away usually because that weakens the h6 square. There's either a check or uh, sometimes there's a pawn on h6 and that's why you can't push. So it's an annoying piece. Yeah, it is on d6 pawn as you mentioned is uh, this square, sorry, is um, uh, very important, though not that important to give up the uh, bishop for it. So don't think of bishop e4, d takes e4, knight d6 type of uh, moves, because uh, it would kind of... Um, uh, it it now black has isolated pawn and uh, then it it would change black's structure so it wouldn't be that great for um, white. Queen c8, I like that very much because then we have to decide what to do with the knight. Knight d6. Do you think we should play knight d6? It's one of the options for sure because we definitely don't want to go to real squares with the knight. 96 is the most active. The question will be this trade. What happens if it's a pair of bishops for both players? The rook is hanging and rook d8 would be a natural way to react to it. Attack the bishop, defend the d5 pawn later on. And black is defending well in this position, in my opinion. Yeah, and the only thing I don't like after bishop d6, rook d8 is that black also uh, might have, uh, after bishop f4, uh, bishop a6 maneuver with bishop c4 and then it would be really difficult for white to do something i like that maneuver so the question is whether there's something better than knight to d6 knight d6 simplifies the position but apparently anna went for it there weren't so many squares available for the knight so she decides to go for the trade and your maneuver is on the board so yeah. here we go 
yeah, it is on the board. It was very uh, tempting to uh, activate the bishop because now the bishop on c4 is way better than the bishop on uh, b7. And also you block the c3 pawn. Uh, there are no more ideas with uh, c4. Uh, and now I think it's black again who has initiative because of b5, a5 coming, queen f5, rook c8. I really like black's position. Me too. This... Spawn storm quite possibly on the queen side, the rook coming to the c5. Everything is very instructive on how Alexandra has used the last couple of moves in order to improve her position by white's position that was very pleasant earlier. Yeah. Is now inferior because of this c3 pawn that stayed on the board. Sopiko told you guys that you should uh, you should push that pawn until you can. Now yeah. try to push the pawn. Yeah, it's not so easy. It's uh, really difficult when you have bishop right there e4 i think that's the only way to continue the game otherwise uh, black would just uh put all her pieces on ideal squares and after d takes e4 bishop e4 at least uh, white has some um open diagonals though what i dislike is the pin on d5 mm -hmm. totally that's a problem in the position pressure over both the d and the c5 is better place pieces in terms of how the minor pieces are on the board for black and the queen is really active on h5. So this is a lot of pressure on Anna, who is uh, trailing. It's four points, a four point lead for Alexandra Costa. And you, this may be the last game if this game goes on for a minute and a half, then this will be the final game of the five minute plus one second portion, after which the players will have a short break and we are back. With three plus one and one plus one. Right. Is there rook c4 now? Because rook e8 was a bit like, I thought like rook c4, rook c4, bishop h7, king h7, queen e8, but it doesn't bring anything. We are losing the d4 pawn. Um, yeah, there's nothing going on. I think I still like black's position. Uh, and white has the d4 pawn. Pretty weak. Um, in end games, sometimes it turns to be strength because mm -hmm. it's a passer pawn. But when there are bishops and queens on the board, I think that d4 pawn is weakness. And especially this position, um, it should be now better for uh, white to defend it. But still, it's very difficult. Yeah, the rook appeared in the second rank, which is always good news. Plus, white has problems with the back rank because of this very well-placed queen. So she pushes h4, but still it's a bit problematic with such active heavy pieces, now putting pressure on the f2 square as well. So Alexandra has taken the initiative one more time. Yeah, and a2 pawn also, white has to take care of the a2 pawn. Queen d5 now can be uh, played, but... Good maneuver uh, for white should be queen d5, rook c1 back. Rook c2, I like it very much. Queen e3, and now maybe queen rook a2, just mm -hmm. a pawn for uh, Three black. stuffs. I'm going to okay. use some emotes in the chat. Three um, stuffs, guys. <laughs> yeah. Where's my chocolate? That's going to be my next comment in the chat. Where's the chocolate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Soon it's break time, so I'm already thinking about which chocolate should I eat. <laughs> All right, back to the game. Rook c1, obviously, wanting to get back what has been lost, but so far it's a pawn up for black and it's troublesome anyway to um, abandon the back rank. Black is not a line, rook takes c4 as a trade on c2 potentially. And this queen end game is still problematic. Even if you win this pawn on f7, mm. it is so dangerous. The quality be between the pawns is quite a striking difference. Plus black is going to win the d pawn and still have this very strong c fast pawn. Yeah especially when a c pawn is on c4 it can be very fast even maybe we don't even need to take on d4 and play c3 right away with the idea of queen d1 c2 check and very quickly queening so that's really not what should happen though it is on the board as far as i see and that's what happened c3 uh, there was there's no need to give a mm. check and then check and c2 it is lost even better than on the line I was showing, why don't you just push the pawn and not care about the d4 pawn? Very instructive. It's about the quality of the pass pawns, not the quantity. That's what I'm referring to in my upcoming course. I actually just recorded a video on this very same topic in Queen and Games a few Ooh. days ago. So spoiler, 
from me that I said this in videos of mine already that are not out <laughs> yet. <laughs> Ooh, we are looking forward to that. Um, after this, the problem is that this past one is going to promote, there's one problem for black and that is the threat of the perpetual check. So white is doing very well in keeping an eye on the F5 squares and F8 CA squares. That is, those are the potential perpetual check squares. Oh, so maybe oh, now we're now it's my fault. Oh, geez, oh 0 0.5 seconds. Oh, my God. D5 pawn is lost. Okay, there is really... This was the last game. Last game. It's a 5-1 lead for Alexandra Costa. And you, we are going to go for the next session. That is an hour of 3 minutes plus 1 second yeah. blitz games. But before that, the players will go for a short break. And so are we. Join us in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We are just going to grab, grab some chocolate. And, and don't forget to click the moments, definitely. Clips and answer the question of the day, and then we'll see you in a few minutes. See you, stay tuned.
Chess.com is about playing. At any moment, there are thousands of people from around the world playing on Chess.com. So whether you're a total beginner or a grandmaster, you'll find a game quickly with someone at your level. You can play at any pace, from one minute bullet, to five minute blitz, to 60 minute games. Or you can play more relaxed games where you have several days to make your move. There are tournaments starting every few minutes. Or you can play against our customizable coaching computer. Chess.com is for learning. Chess isn't just about playing, it's about getting better. Chess.com puts the best training tools at your fingertips. Sharpen your game with over 50,000 tactics puzzles. Improve your strategy with training videos by top grandmasters. Get instant feedback after your games with real-time computer analysis. Regardless of where you're at now, you can take your game to the next level. Chess.com is for sharing. Join the community where you can discuss chess ideas in the forums and follow the latest chess news, or join a club with friends and play in a league against other clubs. You can find all this in your browser at home and at work, or on the go with your phone or tablet. Signing up is free and easy. So what are you waiting for? Enjoy your game. Welcome everybody to the second match of the Women's Speed Chess Championship. This is the match between Alexandra Kostanyuk and Anna Zatonsky. So people and myself are covering the match and we are so thrilled to be here. We are indeed. And so far the match was pretty good for Alexandra because yep. she has five point lead. But I think that Anna will come back in the coming portion. It may be the case. And we also want to remind you of what's coming up next, tomorrow's match is also a big one. Yes. Who do you think will be the favorite there, Valentina Glumina or Irina Crush? Oh, I don't know, because I think that Valentina, she is really uh, a big professional of Blitz, uh, and she loves to play Blitz. She is very strong. Also, Irina Crush, she's, uh, she's into Blitz games very much, so we'll have very fighting and exciting match, but I still think that Valentina Glumina might be a slight favorite. I also think she's a favorite. She's very good in speech as well and online chess too, but Irina is a fighter and she, oh, she is. has won the US Women's Championship multiple times. So what we see is yes, uh, today and tomorrow, it's basically two players of the Olympic team of Russia facing two players of the Olympic team of the US. Yeah, and that's actually great to see. It's like a thematic match between USA and Russia. But Valentina Gunina will be also playing the Candidates Tournament, um, mm -hmm. which is starting very soon in three days. Uh, and actually, there are four players from Russia. There is one Georgian. <laughs> and um, I actually wish all of them good luck. It's going to be a very exciting tournament. But before, we have important matches. Indeed. So we will be covering all the matches of the Women's Speak Chess Championship. You have just seen the schedule. The player that will win today, so far it's looking like it's going to be chess queen Alexandra Kostanyuk will make it to the semifinals and the main prize. The prize fund for this event is $20,000. Ooh, that's a lot of money. And in the pre-match interview, actually, Alexandra was asked, what you going to do with the money if you need if to you... spend it in one day? It's yeah. a tricky question. And it was the final prize money, not the match money, but if she wins the whole event. and. Actually, that's a very difficult question because like, uh, you have to have something in mind if you really want, but if you don't want anything, then it's difficult to come up with something in a second. So she said, first of all, that she didn't know what was the prize money, <laughs> but I think she was pleasantly surprised. Uh, <laughs> um, and she said that she would spend it on usual stuff where, like women's stuff, jewelry, makeup, bags, and so on. <laughs> and she also said that she she didn't actually know the prices that much because she wanted to participate in this event anyhow yeah. to support women's chess and support the initiative of chess.com to bring on more top-class women tournaments. And that's very nice of her. Such model like Alexandra, she herself uh, uh being a model, like a real model and model of chess. She is doing everything to promote women's chess, as well as Anna, she is doing a lot of things. And there, there was a very nice gesture uh, from her in the beginning, but the game already started. And I think 
we have to take a look what happened. I was going to say that this is a known uh-huh. trick in the open Catalan. Even I know it, Sofiko, yeah. that knight c3 is not the best move for white because it allows be five. You can't take this pawn because you will lose the rook. It's a Ooh. discovered attack. So b, knight c3 is not the best move because of allowing b5. Right. Either it is some deep preparation or um, Alexandra just uh, forgot it, that B5 is there. And it's not the end of the of world, course, of yeah. course. Uh, but um, as we see, it is way easier for uh, Black to uh, develop. And uh, she managed to uh, put C5 in one go, like B4, B5, B4, C5. That's the main idea uh, of this uh, game for Black, and she managed to do with Tempest in one go. Mm -hmm. That's very important, of course, in this stage of the game that Black wins a few Tempe for her development, and now it is trade on B4. We shall see if Black will want to take or play knight C6, attack the queen, develop. The knight. Still, there are some issues in the position, but so far it's looking good for Anna in terms of getting that equalizing position. The time, the time situation is always in favor of Alexandra, and in yeah. three plus one, it's going to be a bigger issue. Oh yeah, it's going to be really important, and um, I like the way Alexandra is playing because she is very fast and she um, she does not really miss the tricky tactics. So. It's really uh, saying that uh, she's just queen at the moment. Mm -hmm. But Anna has uh, time to fight back because she is a big fighter. And we've seen a lot of games where she she is just, you know, fighting. She has this fighting spirit and it doesn't matter what kind of position she has. She will just play it till the end. True. It's a funny situation currently on the board with so many pieces on the background. But Bishop D8 makes a lot of sense to force might do something about this knight on a5 because why is controlling the c6 square with those two knights you want to develop you want your pieces to have more freedom now after the knight going back finally black could play knight to c6 yeah and that was very nice uh, way to free the position and to uh, develop as much pieces uh, are traded is better for black because black already has c file and white is a bit um uh, black is ahead in development uh so far i can say so good for anna because now knight b3 is not doing that much but i don't know if this game will be the turning point she badly needs to start winning games it's a five point lead for alexander costa new with only half of the match ahead of us that is a one hour session of three plus one blitz and then half an hour for the bullet yes and then bullets and it really has to be very fast yeah oh but alexander is just such a beast in blitz and speed chess in general yeah she is i've seen her video uh when she was she covered all uh chess squares all board squares i think in like with knight in like 10 seconds. Oh, that you need to jump to every square with the knight, but yeah. only can touch one square, one square. once. Yes. That's really difficult. She did exactly. it in 10 seconds? I think so. I, I am not sure, but she, she was really very fast. You give me an hour and I'll still be thinking about the solution. <laughs> <laughs> she got it in 10 seconds. All right, yeah. try to do that at home. <laughs> every square touched by the knight, you can only move to every square once and you need to cover the 64 squares. That's and your homework. Clip it. Yeah, and just quit general <laughs> in general parts of the broadcast that you like because we will choose the moment of the day after this segment. So you have a bit less than an hour to choose which is your favorite moment of the day. And we will have a look at the clips. The chess.com team is already working on watching those clips and your feedback on Twitter as well. Use the hashtag speedchess to tell us about your opinion on the question of the day as well. Right. And now Again, in this position, I think black is doing very fine, but I don't see also big, big problems for uh, white as well. Only thing that uh, I can say is that the C file is um, white uh, under uh, black's favor. And if white plays B3, which is very much needed to um, to support the A4 pawn, then it would weaken the C3. 
um, square. So now we have very different situation because, situation because the rooks are gone and b3 was uh, needed not to allow white to play b3 and trades on b5, this should be an easy draw. It should be, except for the fact that the players are going really down on time. So a blunder could still happen with knights on the board and that's like that for Anna Zatonsky. Yeah. Oh, why did she? Okay, she gives up the A pawn to now take on A four. Yeah, pinning. Uh, she could have taken with the rook too, but she was afraid of something. Still, of course, this rook trade would lead to a simple knight and game, even if the knight was going to be in the corner. With the rook still on the board and this pressure on the seventh rank, eight seconds left for Anna. F five knights coming in. Oh, this is going to be oh. tough, I think, because. Every time I say this is going to be an easy draw, um, somehow somehow it does not end in an easy draw. Yep, and there's a fork option on e6. She prevented with rook to e8, but the pawns will F4, march. Four, f5, knight e6. Um, still, still in a real... Oh, she just... Oh my God. She just didn't realize that the drop was hanging. That was scary. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> if you haven't had a moment of the day candidate yet, I think we have one. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> we scared each other. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Luckily, the players cannot hear us. <laughs> <laughs> because we would have scared the hell out of oh, them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we would definitely. But wow, that that was just just a blunder from Alexandra Kostin against yeah, the first game of the three plus one segment won by Anna Zatonsky, which was very much needed. Let's see if this can be the turning point. Yeah, we would love to show you the moment where she did not move the rook, but there's no time for it because the next game is on. Anna bounces back with this win, but still a way to go. It's yeah, about four more points. I'm very good at math. <laughs> Five minus one is four. It's a four point lead still for the chess queen. I took you uh, to teach math to Danny, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so four point lead, still a lot. Anna has to win still four more games to level the match score, and then we'll see what happens. But it's not easy. Just it's the first time we've seen in this match that Alexandra blundered so easily. Indeed, yep. we saw blunders by Anna earlier. Twice she blundered the piece, and then in one game, even her queen. And Alexandra, as you mentioned, she had played. Very good chess. Even yeah. when she was in worse positions, she would make sure she does not go for tactical motives. Exactly. And uh, it's first time we've seen Alexandra blundering. Maybe it's time for snacks for her? Does she get Could tired? Be the moment. Could be the moment. Both players are prepared. They have snacks right next to the computer. We have as dark chocolate. <laughs> Indeed. Both of them have dark chocolate. 70% dark, cho dark chocolate for Anna. Alexandra was eating a cookie right before the show. And yeah, was and it was, a, a, I, I saw it and I was like, what are you eating? It's so yummy. You look mm. so yummy. I know. <laughs> I wanted to get some of the cookie somehow virtually, but I didn't. <laughs> In this position, though, once again, we see quite a symmetrical position. The one difference being a little bit on how this e4 pawn gives more space to white pieces, while the e6 pawn is blocking the c8 bishop for the moment. And if you push e5, thinking that that will help you develop your pieces, you give up the d5 square, which is really important. Yeah, I agree with you. And once again, we see nice position for Anna. Uh, so far with the time, she is doing very fine. She did not uh, take a lot of time, so she has still two minutes on the clock. Uh, and open files for the rooks. Big problem for black is the c8 fissure. And I like this d6 square very much as well. I can play maybe a rook d6, rook d1 at some point. Um, I think white pieces are nicely uh, placed, mm -hmm. but there is always space to improve, mm -hmm. right? Indeed. Now, after the queens were traded on g5, this is the current position where black is still struggling to develop the c8 bishop. Yeah. And b6, bishop b7 would be the natural way, but then d7 square, you would give up the d7 square, which is very important. You shouldn't allow rook uh, on seventh rank. That's why 
95 was played. And after 95, that was very nice that um, uh, Alexandra could play bishop d7 and bishop c6. This is way better than b6, bishop b7. I agree with you, it was crucial. And it takes now time for Anna to bring the bishop from f3 to g2 in order to be able to push the f1. And now if I still some pressure on Alexandra, but the position has improved and in a sense that she managed to develop that c8 bishop. Yeah, it, the position simplified and I still like white's position because of the space. Uh, though there is one thing that White should be careful. I know that this e5 pawn, it looks very attractive. And White always tries to push the pawn to e5 to get the d6 square. But the thing is that in endgame, it might be actually a weakness because it is very much advanced pawn mm -hmm. and pawns cannot go back. Mm -hmm. uh, so if uh, Black manages to go f6, fe, fe, that would be a very weak pawn. Yes, it also has its drawbacks, as Sophie mentioned. Whether black can get f6 and take on e5 will be the question in the future. So far, when he's aiming for the d6 square, but alone, that will not change the position that much, especially when you see that with the knight on f6, black can and will push f6. Yeah, so after b5, a5 is a smart way because you don't want to open the a file for the rook mm -hmm. um, and you cannot get to b5 so easily. There was one thing that maybe white could take a b a b knight d6 f b knight b5, but the problem was that our b3 uh, pawn is also weak. So you win the pawn, but you lose b3 pawn after rook b8. f6 was played even without knight to d6, as Sophie mentioned. If black can take on e5, that would weaken that pawn. And that's why Anna decides to capture on f6. Now that will give some relief to black. There's no more knight d6 jumps that would annoy the position. Yeah, and we have the daily question uh, on the screen. Just a reminder that your opinion is very important. Mm -hmm. So please tell us what do you think, what chess community should be doing to grow women's chess? Indeed, and we do appreciate any ideas. As you can see, this is the first women's speed chess championship and that's one of the many ways in which chess.com is helping to promote women's chess, more girls and more women to play chess, whether as a profession, whether as a sport, or whether yeah. as a hobby. I don't think that really matters as long as people like chess. And I would love to see more girls and more women in chess in general. Oh, I agree with you. And it's, it's, it's very good sport even if you're not going to play it professionally it helps you in life as well life decisions like uh, when you're about to uh, make a big life decision if you're a chess player you would always think about pros and cons you would take your time and then make a move in your life but if you're not a chess player you might <laughs> might hurry up a bit i agree with you that chess teaches so many life skills and if you want to know more about the parallels between chess and life, and pick up Gary Kasparov's books, for instance, How Life Imitates Chess. Ooh, that's very nice one. But I'm happy you remember them. Okay, I read so it about 10, 15 years ago, but it's a really nice book. <laughs> so we have uh, King E3 and Rook B5, now a bit of problem on A5. I have a feeling, feeling that um, Black is overtaking or h6 pawn is too weak so there is always knight f7 knight h6 i don't know maybe it was better to play knight f7 knight h6 instead of taking the pawn on b4 because that, that could have been a possibility although we will not have time unfortunately to go yeah. back because now the current situation is that it's nine seconds left for alexander for the first time in the match she is under time pressure yeah that's wow what is happening first time we've seen that she blundered in the first mm -hmm. game after the break and now she has less time than Anna. Yes, and this shows something. It's a signal. Even if they now end up repeating three times, I think what we are witnessing is that, yes, even Alexander came back under pressure. She did blunder once. And there's a change now. Rook takes d5. And it's not Anna repeating. Goes. I, Anna goes for uh, play. And that's what I mean, that she's has a fighting spirit. She doesn't give up and give a half points even so easily. She just wants that opponent really equalizes. 
nighttime games can be very tricky always because uh, it can jump to both colors, white and black ones, and it can be very tricky for both sides, actually. And now look at these knights. Both are paralyzing the other in a sense that you were attacking here, yeah, the two pawns. And after the H pawns fought, this is a draw. <laughs> very well fought game. They were trying, both players were trying, but now the only thing that white needs to do is to give up her knight for the remaining pawn of black, and then it's a handshake. But for the first time, we saw Alexander under temperatures. So yes, good sign for Anna. Yeah, indeed, that's a good sign. This game is drawn very solid, nice game. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see how this segment will go for Anna Zatonsky, who is four point, points down in the match. Oh, Scandinavian! Not an, not an easy way to come back from a four point disadvantage, but it's still 40 minutes left from this segment. That's many, many Blitz games. Scandinavian, now we have uh, on the board. This is uh, the opening that Anna is using time to time, but mm, usually she plays either French as her main repertoire or Patrick with off a bit line with knight f6. This is uh, the line which she is not using so much, but I think she just prepared for this mm -hmm. match a bit and she was. Uh, thinking if I'm down, because you you have to um, think of different strategies, like if you're uh, four points down, maybe you need more um, energetic and active opening uh, to get back into the match. If you're uh, leading, then you can stick to Petro mm -hmm. or French. So I think we figured out Anna's, <laughs> Anna's strategy. Anna's she needs strategy. to change her opening. And the French defense was the one that I think if Alexandra had had the time to prepare, she definitely prepared for the French defense. So it's right. a good choice not to go for your main opening in blitz games and you, want, and you really want to surprise your opponent when you are trailing four points advantage for Alexandra. Yeah, and Alexandra played everything, all sorts of move orders, d4, c4, knight f3, e4. She didn't play g3 first, but that we can see in bullet. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a developing move with a check, after which black could castle, but this bishop can sometimes be in trouble if they are no black f5. Ooh, yeah, castle is pretty dangerous because of, as you mentioned, f5, but so far, it, can it be the case that when the king oh. is very nice in the center? I agree with you, h5, Anna is about to open the h5, but f5, a counter punch to H2. point out that this bishop is a problem piece. Yeah, there's a potential piece sacrifice here. hg, fg, rook h3, what's going on, king g2, and I don't know, maybe long castle to get another uh, rook into the game with rook h8 and rook h2. Very interesting. Let's see if the players will go for it. After f5, Anna, um, Anna has played bishop h7, so we will not see the piece sacrifice. Instead, there's a capture on e6. And the h file is still about to be open. I thought that uh, this kind of sacrifices are very nice in blitz games and especially in mm. online chess because you have the initiative and uh, initiative is very important when your uh, uh, opponent has not so much time to uh, defend. Uh, but Anna's choice all is also very interesting because now we see what I said before that e5 pawn might be weak. And this is, I think, the case when advanced pawns are not always best pawns. I fully agree with you, and we shall see what's going to happen if there's a capture on g4. The only thing that um, is not working immediately for black to go for a trade and bishop f5 to win the h pawn, there's a check on a4 so that we can move or. This exchange sacrifice also comes to mind. Yeah, because then black's king would be also pretty weak because it's in the center. Bishop g5 was actually a very smart move. It restricts black from uh, castling long, long side, which is very much needed because uh, now it is great all what happens, but we definitely need another rook into the game and into the attack. 
She ended up pick, picking up the c3 pawn, and then there's a queen trade. Opposite colored bishops, but whose king is in more trouble here? Wow, that's a very, very nice g6. Oh, has to be played yeah. in on the f5. And oh, rook f3, that's nice. Nice. Oh, that's so this. nice. Oh, I was like, it's almost a winning move because <laughs> the rook was hanging. Rook c6 still saves the piece, but beautiful tactical motive. But I couldn't take it because she takes f3 would have been a check. And then you take, then you pick up the bishop. Can I draw the diagonal? Yes, there it is. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But uh, we have to mention a very uh, active direct play from chess queen right away not caring about pawns trading the queens and then using the b file rook b1 rook b7 uh pointing out that not only my king is weak but your king is also in trouble that was indeed very impressive yes and what's left on the board is unfortunately not that exciting anymore it's opposite colored bishops an end game that will lead to a draw, equal pawns, but even with an extra pawn right now for black, this is easy to defend with opposite color bishops. Yeah, and Alexandra is very experienced leads player and very uh, good at tricks as well as uh, Anna Zadonski because she is most of the time uh, in time trouble. And when you're in time trouble, you uh, mm -hmm. see tactics easily because you are all about not to blunder anything because you're in time trouble so we had really fighting game yes and i just wanted to add that it was anna who offered a draw in this end game even though she's a pawn up it's obviously a draw position yeah. and time matters it's only a bit over half an hour left from this segment she badly needs to start new games to bounce back and have a chance in the match Exactly, and we have again Fiancatos on the board. Now it is Anna who is uh, with white pieces. Alexandra was using it in the first few games. Uh, it seems that uh, it's very popular nowadays in Blitz that you, it, it's easier to play. Like you know what to do. Like you put the bishop on g2, you put the bishop on b2, and then you play in the center and you really want to get this knight on e5. I agree fully with everything you mentioned. And now after c5, um, the problem is, yeah, we are giving up on the e5 square. We are creating a, a nice little ball for black if you take back with the knight. If we take c5, which is the other option, Yes, that connects the pawns, but leaves the knight on a6. So black had to make a choice. Which one is preferable? Do you want an isolated pawn and bring the knight, or will you connect your pawns, but keep still the knight on the rim? So you will need to jump to b4 in the future. Yeah, and as an isolated pawn, as well as in hanging pawns, the rule is that you should not trade pieces. You should use the hanging pawns uh, with the pieces, try to attack, because all these breakthroughs with d4, c4, and opening up diagonals uh, for pieces might be useful for you. But if you don't have pieces, then you're in trouble, because hanging pawns, actually, they are weaknesses in the position. This is very, uh, very, very typical what is happening in this game uh, with d4 and c4. There are brilliant games of Gary Kaspara with hanging pawns um, and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, typical games. Mostly what white is trying is to um, break this uh, pawn mm -hmm. chain with e3 and white over already has b3, so c4 square he can use. But to be honest, I like Black's initiative. I also like it, even though the knight is still on the rim, but it's very easy to visualize a position there. You get your knight to be four. The long diagonal is great if you can put even more pressure on it. Perfect. The knight on e4 is very well placed. And as you said, what I should be aiming for is to tear those pawns apart. If you can get in a b4 or e3 pawn push in the right moment, that would be great for white, but it's not happening anytime in the near future. And the knight comes in to be for very active pieces for black that will cause problem for Anna. So Alexandra is bouncing back from this difficult situation where she was under pressure. She lost mm -hmm. her first game in, in a way that was unexpected. Yeah. Simply not, not seeing that her rook was hanging. Yeah. That also caused a couple of clips, I believe. Yeah. Uh, make sure to 
tweet them as well, who use the hashtag speeches and keep on clipping because we are looking for the moment of the day, even if it may have happened already. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Uh, but for me, the moment of the match was the moment when you scared me. And I was referring was to that. <laughs> <laughs> you scared me. No, we cannot. I we think cannot you were first. <laughs> the rook hanging on V7, we are referring to, I'm sure that that is a candidate for moment of the day, but we may still experience even more exciting moment in the bullet portion, which is coming yeah. up after the three plus one blitz. There's half an hour left from this segment, and it's a four point lead for Alexandra Kostenyuk. Will Anna Zatonski bounce back? Let us know in the chat your opinion. Do you think it will be a close match or Alexander will manage to win very confidently? We want to know who we are rooting for, and we are monitoring the chat on Chess TV and Twitch, so make sure to talk to us. Yeah, do that. E3 is on the board, so uh, Anna is trying to uh, tear these uh, pawns and uh, pawn chain. Now the problem is that Black cannot take D takes E3 as the knight is hanging, so uh, Bishop E4 comes to my mind. But once again, if Black does not manage to do something about the uh, pawn chain, then we might see... Um, Alexandra in trouble. Though, so what I think, do you think bishop e4, queen, let's say, d2, queen d5 might be, oh, queen c4 played? And they may end up repeating moves, if not, bishop takes b3. I, I don't know, but it's also interesting to go bishop e4, queen d2, right? Mm -hmm. And queen d5, then we take e takes c4. Anna is repeating, so it seems that Anna would be happy with the draw from this position. She has 24 seconds left, and she may not be that happy about how this middle game turned out. Yeah, King H8. Alexandra goes for pawn sacrifice because after King H8, White can take E takes D4, C takes D4, Queen D4. Um, ah, she has a tactic. She doesn't. With 92, she has a tactic. 92! <gasps> wow, nice. beautiful! Alexandra on fire. She decided nice. not to repeat move because of this tactical motive, winning the rook on C1. That was beautifully played yeah. by the chess queen. Yeah, it was really nice. 92 was a little trick. And black won. So Alexandra has now five-point lead. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, that is a response of Alexandra to everyone in the chat who may have said that it's going to be a close match. I see many of you supporting Alexandra, so of course I'm just teasing you. And also make sure that you hover your mouse over the screen where you see the broadcast thunder here. <laughs> and then you can click on Alexandra's channel because she does stream on Twitch regularly. Make sure to support her channel. Yeah, and actually we are really spoiled this time, chess community, that... A uh, world champion like Alexandra Hikaru Nakamura mm -hmm. is also streaming. Bashir, Maxim Bashir-Lagrav is also streaming. Even Magnus started to stream. It's a golden era for chess. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that we are living in the era where everyone streams. And that should mean that you, lady, <laughs> will also start your own Twitch channel. I arrived today in the Netherlands. I'm on it, guys. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh my god. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so what we have, we have uh, castle and same motives with um, uh, bishop d3, queen c2, like we had uh, in the game. Alexandra used it already, this um, uh, castle um, against Anna with h3, knight f3, but now knight is on e2, and f4 is tiny bit... Um, new move, uh, new in sense that usually white goes here f3 and rook e1. Maybe f4 was mouse sleep, or maybe it's just an idea I'm not aware of. Hmm, a good question. I was a little distracted because I see that the chat is going to suggest your channel name. She has already registered on Twitch, which is the first step. So, <laughs> Sopico does have a Twitch username. We just yes. need to set up her channel, and I think it's going to happen in the coming days. Yeah, it will. I promise. I promise it will. Um, and maybe you play Bullet. <gasps> All right. Once we stream on your channel, I'm going to play, be playing Bullet on your show. Okay. Deal. Oh, deal. Yeah. That's a nice one. Nice. So easy to make business yeah. with you. Yeah. I'm pretty naive. <laughs> 
it's happening guys so we will have our first channel the first show on twitch in the coming days i think tomorrow we can announce a day so we will discuss on which wow. day we can do it tomorrow remember there's another match that is coming up in the women's features championship between valentina gunina and irina crush let us know how do you see that match and who will you be rooting for today and tomorrow it's two members of the russian olympic team versus two members of the u.s olympic team it is Ooh, it's a very, very tense match uh, with Russians and Ukrainians playing against each other. But so far, uh, Alexandra is doing very good because of 5.8. But still, a lot of time, a lot of time. And a bullet section is coming up. Who is the fastest chess player? I feel like Alexander will do very well in Bullet as well. So Anna badly needs to bounce back already in this section. Yeah, I agree with you. Five point lead is huge. And what happens in the game? Just the rook is gone somehow. <laughs> um, How did that happen? I look at the chat for a moment and then the rook is gone. Um, all right, bishop e4 was missed in a sense that knight knight takes are, knight, this nice. is the moment. The, Tactical motive of taking on d5 to win the rook on a8. Alexandra, once again, on fire. Her tactical skills have always been extremely strong. That's one of her best skills. And the players were asked, actually, about what do they consider the strengths and weaknesses of their opponents. Alexandra talked about Anna and what she said that the biggest strength of Anna is is that she's a very experienced player and yeah weakness remember what she said yeah she she said that uh she's spending a lot of time on uh chess alexandra because she's a professional chess player anna is also a professional chess player but she has family she has two kids and she probably is not working on chess because of family as much as needed so in chess it's always useful to know your opponent's family situation <laughs> and how much time they can then look into chess but we did see in the previous match too that Katarina Lagno one of the top female players yeah. in the sense that she almost won the women's world championship in classical chess a yes. few months ago she competed she didn't qualify she didn't make it through and she had to look after her children she's got four kids and they were running around her during amazing the match. I was insisting to uh, break her and to so that she tells me what is the secret uh, that she's playing so good after having four kids and four of them to take care of them, of family, and then just qualifying in the finals of World Championship, Women's World Championship, then winning World Women Bleeds Championship. That, that was amazing. She, she didn't have time. No, we don't know the secret. She, she just yeah. said that she didn't play good chess. She's very hard on herself, but we will be rooting for Katya and all the rest of the players, Alexandra too, in the candidate, which yeah. is starting in just three days in Kazan. That's where most of these top female players are heading. And Alexandra too has been focusing on her preparation for the Women's Candidates Tournament. That's why she said that she will not do any particular preparation for today, but she has been playing a lot on chess.com and yeah. streaming, competing in the Tuesday's event as well, the type of Tuesday. So I think it goes to show that she's very comfortable on chess.com. Yeah, definitely. I've seen one of her streams and she was uh, very nice. She had a very smooth stream. And as you mentioned, she played a lot of tournaments uh, as well. And I think she really enjoys it. Yeah, she does love playing online. I think the streaming even added to that. So she has always been playing quite a lot online. Yeah, and after she started streaming, it's an additional feature that you can even see her reactions. You can talk to her while she's competing. Yeah, and it's amazing that she is um, an active player. She streams uh, and she's playing a lot of Blitz and she's as well a commentator. She commentated the uh, Women World Championship. She was first playing mm -hmm. uh, there and then she commentated with her husband uh, Trubukov uh, the World uh, Women's Championship when she was knocked out. Yes, now this position, it's equal material on the board, but there's a danger because of the Black King situation, the Queen and the Knight are very strong together. So Alexandra is trying to get something out of this position. Will she manage? Tricky. 
As I mentioned, night end games are always tricky. Alex and Anna has 10 seconds on the board and the pawn is gone. Second one, can second one go, though we still have equal uh, material because two against one on the king side. But it is very tricky because after a3, king e3 is not possible oh, because of knight c2. It anyway. She allows it. Be can it be because she wants to go king b3 and then take the pawn? Uh, oh, h3. That's a very nice, nice move. Now knight c4. This is chance for Anna to grab mm -hmm. a point. Definitely. King f4. Why not king f4? Yeah, that was a possibility to head toward the g pawn. But clearly, Alexander pushed them a little too hard in this game. She wanted yeah. to win so badly. And now she resigns. She and resigns actually, because h3. Yeah, and king g5 then is a better move than what we thought coming closer with the king. It does take away both of these pairs. And h3, you cannot stop the pawn with the knight. Yes, yeah. so instructive. Playing in a second. And as we know, the king opposes knight. This is a very nice opposition. King g5 and king e4 versus 97, also very fine. Four point lead for Alexandra Kostanyu, but with this victory, at least the confidence is coming back for Anna. It Definitely. does shake up a little bit, Alexandra. Psycho psychology matters so much in chess, so anything can still happen. 20 minutes left for this segment, remember. Yeah, it does. And both of them have to be very fit to sit for three hours, look at the screen, and play this tense match where there is a lot of pressure. There is bullet section, there is bleed section, there is three plus one. Oof, it's tough. <laughs> Shout out to everyone, by the way, joining us on Chess TV and on Twitch. I see that we are almost 5,000 chess friends from all around the world. Welcome, everybody. This is the first ever Women's Speech Thank Chess you. Championship. Thank Thanks you for joining. Being here. Let us know where are you joining us from, where are you tuning in from, which city, which country, because we do love to see how international the chess community is. And make sure to answer the daily question with the hashtag speed chess on why do you think or how do you think we could improve women's chess in general? What can we do to promote and get more into uh, chess in terms of girls and women starting to play this game? I think it's exactly. a hobby or sport, it doesn't really matter. Exactly. And we do know from uh, which city's players are playing. Mm -hmm. Alexandra is home, uh, so she's playing from Moscow. Mm -hmm. Well, she said it in her pre-interview, uh, pre-match interview. And I think Anna is also home. She lives in Germany, so she is playing from Germany. And we're in Holland. We are in Holland. I have arrived today and I'm very happy to be here. There's no <laughs> webcam wall between us. We are in the same room. Yeah, just for three hours, then we go back to basement. Back to the basement. <laughs> That's my life. Oh, there is no basement. Actually, there is basement, but full of chocolates. <gasps> I'm happy to live in a basement <laughs> if it's decorated with chocolate. In terms of this position, it is so far a very interesting middle game position with chances for both sides and also in terms of the time management very balanced good news for anna that she managed to speed up after the first couple of games where she would struggle with her time yeah definitely and um after this trade i i have to say that i think white is doing good because of the knight d4 and um a bit of uh it it would be slightly i i don't even know if I have to say that it, it is hanging pawns, but it looks like hanging pawns. Mm -hmm. um, it would be typical hanging pawn if we had pawn on e2 instead of uh, pawn on c2. Semi hanging pawn, let's say. Yes. <laughs> the traditional hanging pawn would be if this pawn is not on c2. That's why Sophie was talking about it. If it was on e2, that would be the hanging pawn structure. Now it doesn't matter anymore because they are suddenly connected pawns so this is changing the yeah. picture still some pressure over this e6 pawn that's why rook e1 rook b6 was played yeah i have to say that i don't like this change very much for black i i thought that it would be nicer to take oh she couldn't take it with me i'm sorry because the rook was hanging uh but uh forcing black to take with the pawn getting the e5 square and i think bishop is better than the knight because now there is no f7 pawn there cannot be g6 played so this diagonal b1 h7 diagonal might become very important queen d6 i don't think that black white should allow the trade rook 
e5 can be the move, but then knight d7 is the problem. So queen d6 is good move with black, but I still like white's position. I think that white has great initiative. And I like the g4. Yes, with a four point disadvantage, Anna will definitely try to use this game for at least in decreasing that advantage that Alexandra has over her. It's gonna be about still time for I'm trying to come up with the mats in 17 minutes. You can play still a couple of more games. And ideally, Anna would like to enter the bullet portion with a minimal disadvantage, if not a tight score. Yeah, tight score would be ideal, though four points is a lot, as you said. Uh, but so far, things look better in this uh, uh, time control for Anna mm -hmm. than in five plus one. That also can be um, a little trick from Anna that she uh, made her opponent think that, okay, this is going to be an easy match because I have five point lead, but then she goes in beast mode. <laughs> I think if it was done on purpose, that's brilliant, but I'm afraid it's more that she hasn't had much time to practice. She doesn't yeah. play much online. And as she's going through these games, she's warming herself up. Yeah. So she's speeding up because she has been playing already for an hour and a half. And that goes to show that she's capable of playing really quick, yeah. very strong tactical moves as well, but she didn't have the practice. Yeah, that, that is true. And online practice is very different from the real chess practice mm -hmm. because uh, there is no mouse. There can be mouse slips. There, you can just throw pieces on your opponent <laughs> in bullet, um, and which is not possible in online chess. But online chess became very popular. I think it also helps a lot uh, when you're playing fleets online and when you're practicing, it uh, makes you sharper. You see these little tactics uh, the, uh very easily so it's very much i think it's very much recommended to uh play online though you should not only play all the time online you should also do other things like study solve uh tactics mm -hmm. puzzle rush have you tried puzzle rush oh don't tell me about puzzle rush but this is gonna be puzzle rush soon it's 30 <laughs> seconds left for Alexander one more time we are entering a game where she is under time pressure 24 seconds for Anna Slow. The, the time situation is critical for both players. King e4, allowing knight c3 check to pick up the pawn. Is it what she wanted now? Knight b4 is a check. Yes, white pieces are very active. Both pawns are point. hanging mm -hmm. though. And yes. after king c5, I was wondering, uh, rook d7 was very, very necessary because after king c5, it would mm -hmm. be double uh, attack. I like what, wait, rook c oh. It was white mode, sorry. Yeah, I thought that rook c7 is a uh, possibility and we were losing the uh, rook. But it does look good for um, black or white. I'm not sure because we have knight of four as well. Yes, yeah, I was going to say that white is doing well, but there's one chance if this d possible and starts moving forward, that is of course problematic for white and the h3 pawn was protected with rook h1, which is a passive move. Now look at this possible. Yeah, that, that's going to be difficult. Knight b2 is next move. Bishop d1, knight b2, king and b3. Knight f2, now if she wants to pick up the h3 pawn. Ooh, king c2. King, the knight comes back to defend the pawn. Oh, uh, rook c1, indeed. No, oh, knight, knight, knight f2, knight f2. Oh, okay, rook c Oh, well, no. but wait, what did I have to was wait. Yeah, yeah, five seconds on the clock. It's very understandable. But we we see that players are getting tired a bit. It's a very difficult match. A lot of blunders are there. And now it's one pawn up for chess queen. But this should be a draw because yeah. it is blocked. And even though Alexander is extremely strong in tactics, she will always find it. Yeah, with under such pressure after so many games played, even she didn't see a simple tactic that was the fork on F2. Yeah, usually what happens is that you play the move and then you're like, oh my God, that was knight F2. But you have to get over it because if you think about it, then it is bad for yeah. the game. What Alexander can do here, even if it's ending in 
a draw. She flagged. Oh, Anna flagged in a drawn position. Oh. No, that the worst that can happen to her because she was already trailing. And now it's an even bigger advantage for Alexandra. I was going to say that I think we should play on even if it's a draw because yeah. that uses time from the counter. But this is incredible. Anna lost on time. Oh my God, that's very, yeah, we see that one second is really nothing. It's just when you have a queen and you will mate and you won't be flat. But one second is not enough uh, time to think. Yes, now this is troublesome because it is one more time a five point lead for Alexandra Costenio. 13 minutes to go from this segment, so it's becoming quite clear that Alexandra will enter the bullet with an advantage. The question is, will it be a five-point advantage? Will it be a bigger than five-point advantage yeah. or less? What do you guys think? Let us know in the chat. Do you see that Alexandra will keep on collecting points or will she keep this advantage? Will Anna manage to bounce back? Yeah, I I don't know because uh, it, it is very tough when you're also already five points down. Mm -hmm. You think that you need a lot of points to uh, catch up, but you try your best. And um, it, Anna really has to be quicker. And especially in bullet section, it would be very, very uh, difficult to uh, take your time. And maybe she will be forced to uh, not to spend any uh, seconds, any extra seconds. So maybe bullet will go better for her. But we also have to say that Alexandra is playing very good and she's very fast and she's very uh, fast with tactics and everything. So difficult, a difficult match for Anna Sotonsky so far. Uh, but we know that she has a very fighting spirit. She's mm -hmm. a fighter. So we hope that she will bounce back. That's the question whether she will be able to in this position where she has the black pieces. It won't be simple. White has more space. Also, if you see the activity of the pieces with the queen on d4, the rook joining the one and only open sign, and knight h5, threatening mate on g7. First, she will need to defend this position and then try to bounce back. Yeah, that is true. And knight h5 is very annoying. Probably queen f8 is one of the defenses. Well, f6, you don't want to play because then you give up the e6 square. Knight f6, you also don't want to do it. Knight e5 is another way and probably the best way mm -hmm. because after knight e5, you don't want to take with knight because then after f4, you will lose the uh, uh, knight. But d takes e5, I think, will be uh, the mm -hmm. move. Uh, but after even after d takes e5, queen g4, and then bishop g6, bishop, I don't know, it 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 might be tricky still, though black still has queen d6, knight, uh, bishop c8 type of moves, right? Yes, knight e5 is an important move in order to defend on the long diagonal. I wonder why she's thinking she has finally played d takes e5. Is that, oh, I'm just making moves on the board. And now we shall see where Alexander places her queen. One idea is what Sofiko has mentioned. Oh, yeah. an exchange sacrifice, rook yeah. c5. Yeah, I was thinking about it, though I thought that it, it's not very realistic uh, because after knight e5, queen e5, queen f8, I did not see the way to uh, continue the attack. Maybe something like queen f5 or queen e4. Ooh, c5. c5 is on the board, so mm. definitely there was something <gasps> going oh, on. Oh it God. wins because queen g7 is next. What a beautiful finish to this game. Rook e8 check brilliancy by Alexandra Kostenyu. Ooh, another blunder, and Alexandra is now six points lead. She definitely enjoys what happens uh, oh, that in smile, the game. that smile. <laughs> That smile and that drink. What is that energy drink? Ooh. Is that? I'm not sure. We'll need to ask about the drinks, the snacks. And of course, the players can do whatever they like. They can scream and shout, smile, laugh. We Hi. won't hear it. But <laughs> and normally, when you see the classical tournaments, the elite tournaments, over the board tournaments, people, all the top players, they have their poker face on because yeah. you don't want to disturb your opponent. While in online chess, you can do whatever you like. Yeah, that's why you see Picaro singing most of the time, those Abba hits, because you're not disturbing your opponent, so it's not disrespectful. It's great that we can be observing the players. It's right. for the additional yeah, entertainment. 
but the players are not seeing each other. They are not disturbing each other. Yeah, and it would be very unpleasant to, uh, after such blunder, to see your opponent Ooh. has a big smile on uh, her face. Nobody does it. Nobody does no. it in front it's not for uh, of your opponent. But online chess, that's why it's good uh, that we can see uh, their emotions. And Alexandra is pretty expressive. Um, Katerina Lachnow was not expressive at all, and she kept her poker face also in front of camera, which uh, we were pretty surprised. Mm -hmm. And Anna, I, I, I think Anna is also expressive, though less than Alexandra. Yeah. Before we move on with this game and the match, let's just see some of the answers that you guys have come up with to our daily question. Uh, according to chess.com, we have one really interesting one. So let's see that responds to our topic. Let's go and see. Guarantee a proper commentary of main FIDE tournaments. It's pretty disappointing to watch a commentary where it's pretty obvious the hosts are not even interested in women's games. Hashtag speed chess. Wow. And that the hashtag is included because of the question, and that's how you can answer us. Obviously, Sopika and I are more than interested in the messages, <laughs> but I do agree with this response because it's really not cool when yeah. you see that the host would talk about anything but women's chess. Like if they if they talk about women's chess in a way that they consider it inferior, yeah, for instance. Uh, just an example, and without naming anyone that doesn't really draw a nice picture of the event itself. Yeah, that is true. I agree with you. And uh, But nowadays, I don't think that they do it. Yeah, I'm not referring to any recent event. Yeah, and it has been done, and uh, but it, it's getting better, but a great response. Yeah, and come up with more responses about the topic, women's chess, how can we make sure that it's going to grow and not decrease the number of female players because why are we so few yeah why are we so few every everywhere i'm commenting um the organizers are asking why there are so few women just players what is the reason and this is what we are trying to uh, know with this question and if you answer and if you share your thoughts we will be able to get into uh, the topic more and maybe finally realize why there are so few female players. Yes, and what else can we do? As you see, the Women's Speed Chess Championship is one good example on how chess.com and other platforms can help to grow the, the chess community and get more women into chess by organizing, for instance, such an event where the price found is $20,000 it's important yep. that top players, female players, can make a living yeah. out of chess. Of and for that, they need good tournaments. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, because that's all they do, they play professional chess. Yeah. And um, um, they they are also giving their best as male players also uh, to uh, play a good game. Fully agreed. Now we need to get back to the game because the players are down to a minute and a half. It's already a huge lead for Alexander Kostinuk. Six-point lead with this rookie yay tactical motive in the yeah. previous game. A beautiful finish by the chess queen. And still there's time left. Five minutes left from this segment. So this is one of the last games of the three plus one section. And then bullet! The bullet! Ooh. The bullet! The bullet! The bullet. Bullet, bullet! Bullet's going to be fun. There, I'm expecting a lot of blunders. <laughs> but, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> but we'll see. So far, Alexandra is doing great, having six-point lead, which is a lot. But still, bullet section is coming. And in a minute, you can, in six minutes, you can uh, lose this six points. So, uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> the maths, the yeah. math is there. I'm not this good at maths. No, I don't think it should be 12 minutes, but okay. Yeah, I oh, six minutes. Like, if quick Anyways, games. Yeah. yeah. Scholars mate, yeah. six minutes. Yeah. Some, some, some kind of mate. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. What I mean is that Alexandra should not relax and uh, feel that the match is over because there are still bullets. There is still bullet section and a lot of things can happen. What happens in this game is Anna is Anna going to win this game because D6 pawn is 
going to be very, very dangerous. Yep, this is an active king, ladies and gentlemen, and you need an active king in endgames. The rook is about to control the b pawn from the b7 square. This is called a Tarash rook. And now the white king will be supporting the d past pawn, and even you can add the plural, past pawns. <laughs> yes, and it's very nice to see the maneuver with rook e7, rook b7. As you mentioned, this is the terrace rook, but it also cuts the king uh, from uh, the from coming and activating. And this is already very easy win for um, uh, for Anna because after d7 there are lots of maneuvers there is breach that you can mm -hmm. uh, use uh, in this uh, position but simple king c8 and rook c7 would win the game most important is that after uh, trading black will sacrifice of course the rook for the uh, pawn most important is that uh, oh, it's game over because yeah. if rook d4 might promote with a check, it's a discovered attack. One point for Anna Zatonsky, that makes it a five point lead for Alexandra Kostanyuk. And we are potentially entering the last game of this segment. Right. And we have Patrick on the board uh, once again. Uh, Anna used it already in this match. Bishop d3 once again with c3 and d4. Normally there is uh, there are main lines with d4, knight c3, and so on. Uh, but this is what Alexandra is playing against Petro. And it's nice, I think, to play in Blitz because then it's easier. You have to just place your pieces on right squares and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. I fully agree with you. It is going to be difficult for Anna to try to play for a win in such a solid position. But this is the last game, and then she will have her chance in bullet. As you said, in bullet, five points is still doable. So yeah. if Anna starts well, if she goes for a winning streak at the very beginning, then it's still possible. The next session will be half an hour of bullet. That is one minute plus one second increment. That's going to be fireworks. That cherry on the top so stay for that here with us and right after the bullet we will interview both players so that's what's coming up next and we want to give a shout out to all of you joining us all five thousand of you watching the women's speed chess championship welcome everybody and thank you for being here with us it's amazing how many chessmans are out there being interested in these events and i think that will make us want to organize more and more yeah. such tournaments so it's, shout out to all of you it's definitely very important to feel your support to feel your feedback to feel that you are enjoying the games the commentary so we're really happy and we're really grateful that you join in and you're with us you bear two of us so oh it's not easy no, not at all i mean <laughs> i can't bear myself every time i look in the mirror but let's not discuss that <laughs> knight f5 is a great move because black was about to trade and develop the bishop the c8 bishop is still stuck on the back rank so that was an issue the queen came back to have one interesting square for the queen you don't normally see the queen there yeah you don't and it, it's like the rook and the queen they kind of swapped the uh, uh squares i like queen on f1 it says that the f file is open but i liked uh anna's last move d5 really making sure that there is no e4 easily uh, and if after e4 she can take on e4 i think that's what will happen uh i would definitely take without thinking here d takes e4 bishop e4 i would take again this um uh bishop rook e4 uh, and i would feel that i have two bishops and bishop d5 likes the dark squares i don't know why she's taking time hmm. good question d5. In c plus one you don't really want to spend this much time c5 that's also an interesting move maybe much stronger than what i recommended because uh it's it it might be very dangerous for alexandra now as the king white king is really weak and you don't want to open up everything mm -hmm. though i like to play to take a light court bishop <laughs> I, would, I would say stubborn and i would say that i would take right would away you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is still, of course, a very exciting position with a fianchetto structure. As you can see, the pawns are structured in a way that normally there would be a bishop on g7. It isn't there. That gives some possibilities for white on the dark squares. 
but also the white king is out there in the open with a similar situation. There's no bishop on G2, but the king is on G2. Yeah, a strange, strange decision from Alexander to take on C5. Let black take bishop C5 with check and uh, let black just develop very nicely. I, I like what what is black what black is doing. Mm -hmm. I, I really agree. like it. I agree with you. So if black can get one of her pieces, ideally the queen or the bishop on the long diagonal is problematic. For well, this is the last game of the three plus one segment. The time is up, so the result will still count from this game. But after this one, we will have a short break, and the players will be back with bullet one plus one. Ooh, that's going to be exciting. I know, I can't wait. <laughs> will we bet once again on chocolate and carrots? Oh, oh we chocolate and carrots. 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 Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> reminded me, carrots. Do you I know guys what <laughs> happened? She came, I gave her chocolates, which I was not supposed to, but I gave her chocolates just because I'm trying to be nice. She's and she, nice. she told me that, oh, she had carrots, but she ate them during flight. It was the previous flight, so it, it wouldn't survive for a day. I'm going to guess you knew carrots. <laughs> we, did, we, did, we did have a bet the other day. She won, so she, de she deserves her carrot. I'm going to get her carrot. I got some chocolates. I don't think I deserve them, but uh, <laughs> I want my carrots. <laughs> and I did bring the chocolate from all the way from California. Oh, yeah. and I promised to stop it cold. The yes. seeds, chocolate, and some more. Now okay. she's back. Now. In terms of the position... <laughs> There's a funny way of doubling rooks when there's a pawn in between. <laughs> is, it, is it how you double rooks? But yeah, there was a lot of pressure on the F7 pawn. Yeah, there was a rook F8. Yeah, we, we would like to get rid of this pawn, uh, but unfortunately, it's not possible. Rook F6 right away, um, and then rook F1 is very logical uh, to get the F file. Do we lose F7? Ah, check. Okay. Check. I, I, I thought that this Anna missed some chances here mm. because I thought that um, with the open files and attacks, she could have some uh, kind of attack going on, but it's not easy in Blitz at all, especially when your opponent is Alexandra Kostinu, mm -hmm. who is very good in Blitz, who is very fast, and who is one of the top players. Indeed, once again, we have an opposite color bishop and game, which are not easy to play for a win. 17 seconds left for Anna. This being the last game, I'm expecting a draw and then the bullet will be tough for Anna, but still doable if yeah. she starts with a streak. So that will be a five-point lead for the former women's world champion, Alexander Kostenu. Half an hour of bullet games. And this is about qualifying to the next stage, the semifinals of the Women's Big Chess Championship. The total prize fund is $20,000, and the winner will also make it to the overall Big Chess Championship yeah. with a field that is top-notch, including the husband of Sopiko and Ishgiri. Oh, I'm not going to be commentating on that game. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I would love to see you commentating on his game, too. Oh, then finally, I can... Uh, tell all, everything on the stream, <laughs> like what I'm thinking, what that are you doing? doing? That is news. <laughs> I can let it out. <laughs> Why did you not change the diapers of Daniel? <laughs> oh, he's a good boy. He I does. Know. <laughs> Just kidding. Anish is great. He, he's now looking after baby tactics. That's how we can yeah. do the commentary. I hope he puts him to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's sleeping <laughs> time. <laughs> we can check in the break. So we're going to have a break. And this is the last game. The players will go for a short break. And so we are also going for a break. Uh, just to check on the world number four and how he's doing babysitting. We'll be back in a few minutes with the bullet portion. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.
Official Random Chess, a game where creativity is king and memorization impossible. 960 different back rank configurations from the world's best chess players into mere competitors trying to outwit and outclass each other with every unprepared move. Only one will be worthy of the title, Official Random Chess Champion, but the best part is that champion could be you. The Fisher Random Chess Championship will be unlike any tournament ever held. With a global qualification system, for the first time ever, everybody truly has a chance to prove themselves the best player in the world at a chess variant. Are you a chess artist worthy of the 11th World Champion's admiration? We're going to find out. The tournament features open qualifiers beginning on April 28th, and the title player qualifier stage beginning in June. Over $300,000, Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru Nakamura, and world champion Magnus Carlsen await you at the later stages. The Fisher Random Chess Championship title is there for the taking. Will you make a run at it? Go to frchess.com today to register, and stay tuned to chess.com for all the latest news and updates regarding this historic event. It's the FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Championship, organized by Dune AS and chess.com. Still, still in a real. Oh, she just. Oh my god. She just didn't realize that the drop was hanging. That was scary. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> if you haven't had a moment of the day candidate yet, I think we have one. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> we scared each other. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Apparently, the moment of the day goes to <laughs> us. <laughs> scaring each other and yeah. headphone users as well yeah. sorry yeah it, it, it was a great moment though i think and i loved alexandra's face she was like oh and that big smile on her face that that's a great reaction on wonder indeed she didn't realize that the roof was hanging but i think we were more surprised about the situation yeah. than she was we will continue with the match. This is the last portion, but before that, we want to remind you that today this isn't only about the Women's Features Championship, but also the qualifier for the Fisher Random Tournament will be hosted. It's already being held, and there are more sessions coming up. Bigfoot will be hosting the show right after our Speed Chess Championship match today, so don't go anywhere if you want more chess. Fisher Random is really exciting, and the winner of the qualification tournament We'll make it to the big event with Magnus Carlsen in the field. Yeah, I love Fisher Random. I played one tournament uh, in uh, Tbilisi, I think it was. I was pregnant. So oh. Danny helped me and I won it. It's really, really uh, interesting. So very interesting to follow it. Make sure that you follow it because it's great fun. I would love to play, but we've been doing commentary about three and a half hours, four hours by then. So oh, I think yeah. I'll just have dinner and eat more chocolate. Oh, yeah. I do it. You will not give me food. No. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's because I haven't brought any carrots. Hey. Yeah, that was your food. That was supposed to be your food. <laughs> trying to make me healthy. Don't do this to me. And the bullet kicks off with our conversation whether chocolate or carrots should be preferred. Anna Zatonski needs to bounce back. It's already a five-point lead for Alexander Kostenyuk. There's only a half an hour session now. This is the final part of the match. This is the final part of the match, and we will have half an hour of bullet, as Anna mentioned. It's going to be very exciting because there uh, is no more time for anything, just chess, moves, pre-moves, anything. Just don't be flagged. And we have the normal, uh, very normal position. I like this uh, position for black because black already achieved the f5 and bishop on b7. Only thing that uh, black has to take care is that this bishop on b7 is not lost with a trick like knight g5, but bishop e4 serves this um, uh, thing, so uh, it's defended there. And what white should play is just b4, expand on the queen side, b4, a4, and queen b3 after, uh, afterwards. But queen b3 right away? Uh, I'm not really sure about 
queen b3. I thought that b4 would be more challenging, but then c5 could have been a good response to b4. Indeed, Alexandra is a bit concerned about the position, it seems to me. She is under slight pressure, but not on the clock. It's 19 seconds for Anna Zatonsky. So Alexandra Vomorten is doing very well in terms of her time management. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to play bullets to use all these pre book tricks if you're not uh, familiar with the uh, uh, online chess thing with Chesscom. And um, Anna is definitely into Chesscom because she's wearing the Chesscom t-shirt. Yeah, she put on the hoodie because it was cold, but earlier we saw that she is wearing indeed a chess.com polo and a greeting for one of her students on her or his birthday. We'll need to know more about the student. Is Rook hanging? Rook. Yes, Rook. Rook. Yes, <laughs> Rook. Yeah. She gave oh. a chat instead because there's all sorts of attack going, but the night will... Wait. Uh, um, Knight takes, knight takes queen h4, and now knight g4, king e1. The king is trying to hide, walk to the queen side. Oof, ooh. maybe here, but will, will this be gee, anything can happen? I mean, obviously, uh, a free rook is free rook. It yeah. was not taken. Yeah. Now the question is... So chocolate is better than uh, carrot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the conclusion. How did you know? <laughs> I'm very smart. <laughs> you, <that>. are. <laughs> you are. You <laughs> are. <laughs> um, yeah, it still looks very bad. Also, time. Okay, Alexandra has 15 seconds uh, versus 8 seconds, but the position is already very dangerous. Oh, it's for always going to be made. made in if king f1, queen g1, and if rook, well, rook f2, queen f2. So it's yet another point for Alexandra Kostenyuk. It's... Of course, a very tough match for Anna Zatonsky. She's a four-time U.S. Women's Champion. Anna Zatonsky, she has been representing the team of the United States, won silver and bronze with the team of America and Olympic gold on yeah. her board. But her opponent has even more titles. Former Women's World Champion Alexandra Kostenyuk, also the, on the, all the Olympic gold she has collected with her team, Russia, a lot and individual goals. A lot. She is very talented, not only in chess, but she has been modeling. She is an actress. She played uh, in a movie, a Russian movie, which I'm going to ask her <laughs> about it. And um, yeah, she's simply very, very mm -hmm. strong in chess and she's very fast. Um, as we've seen in the games, she uh, has a very fast style. This is the first time I'm uh, thinking that uh, Anna is faster than Alexandra because Alexandra has 47 seconds versus a minute. So oh. Anna is doing very well. Did not lose any second. Wow. Yeah. She only amazing. uses the one second she gets this increment. Remember, it's a one minute plus one second increment game. And now we'll look at this, the, how they traded Bishop, but both weakening their opponent's kings. Yeah, though a7 pawn is gone and we cannot play rook a8 because of queen b7, rook a2 and all queen side pawns would be gone. So she was forced to play uh, queen c7. Mm, sometimes it's important that the position is also good, uh, mm -hmm. not only uh, the time, but so far it's okay for Anna. There is still some hope that she can bounce back, but it's getting harder and harder. Yes, uh, such a big lead already for Alexandra. With only 25 minutes left from the entire match, this is looking great for the former Women's World Champion. And if you guys are not following her channel, make sure to do so. You can hover your mouse over the screen if you're on a PC and click on her channel, support her because she does stream regularly on Twitch. We hope that Anna will also start streaming. That would be great. Yeah, that will be great. And we need more streamers. Mm -hmm. Oof, I'm in trouble. <laughs> All right, so um, what is happening here? I like that uh, b6 pawn is stopping all mm -hmm. these three pawns so far, and we have three uh, versus two, but it's a pawn down for black. And uh, same colored uh, bishop, this is going to be tricky, but uh, Alexandra still needs to show a big uh, technique mm -hmm. how to convert a pawn, if it's convertible at all, because black's rooks are very active. What's great for Alexandra that even if she does not convert this, she will try, of course she should push, she should make this game as long as possible, Yeah, because she's already leading with six points. So that means that 
a draw is not a disaster. She, of course, would prefer to win this. Yeah. But anything but losing games, it will keep this huge advantage that she's collected. Yeah, that, that is true. And after this, th this can be tricky once again. Ooh, a tri pawn is gone. Ooh. Yeah, this is this nice is probably a loss. Yeah, Anna resigns because she wants to play more games. So this yeah. is needed. There's a limited time, only 23 minutes left. So she wants to go for more games to have a new chance. Yeah. And uh, now we have E5, E, E4, C5, finally. Mm -hmm. I was waiting two matches already <laughs> to see this opening. So, King Especially this G3 against the Sicilian. Who knew it? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. We didn't know that they would play this sideline. <laughs> yeah, it's an off bit line. Very interesting. King F1, King G1, King H2. Some kind of thing. Why King G1 and why not King G2? Mm. Maybe it was um, mouse sleep. We don't know. Yeah. Well, let's hope it's preparation because it looks strange. It looks really strange. Yeah, it does. So Anna gives... Mm, gives up her uh, two bishop advantage. Uh, what she gets for it, um, I don't know. Knight f3, queen f3, I think is um, okay for white. Mm -hmm. This bishop doesn't seem to be much better than the um, mm -hmm. uh, knight. But after castle, I really like black's position. Yeah, I agree with you. With now that you have secured your king and at the same time you put pressure on the d3 backward pawn, it was not possible to save that pawn, therefore white pushes b4. And that opens the c5, but the king on g1 is still blocking the rook, the yeah. other rook. Yeah, I think that it was really mouse slip with king mm. g1, king g2, and um, because king g2 was way more natural and more logical. Um, now, I still like black because I think that bishop is a bit stronger than the knight. Objectively, it should be equal. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be anything going on, but it's still a pawn. A pawn is a pawn. Even if it's pawn's pawn's a pawn. doubled, it's a pawn. Yes, and once again, it's Alexandra who is leading with seven points. It's seven points up. If she wins this game, eight points, I don't think one can come back from an eight-point disadvantage. Yeah, eight point is a lot, a lot, and uh, I don't know, probably you need an hour, you need a very tired Alexandra Kostinuk to uh, get back those points. Yeah, which doesn't seem to be the case. Alexandra, of course, has been preparing for the Women's Candidates Tournament that's coming up in just three days in Kazan. She will be competing in order to qualify for her so well-deserved match. She will want to win back the title of the Women's World Champion. And yeah. that's what she was focusing on, not online chestnut blitz, but all the preparation that goes into playing in the candidates tournament is showing now on the board because it's a lot of effort in chess in general. Yeah, and she's been world champion from 2008 uh, and 2010. We had not, we have now a different system. We have a candidates tournament um, and it's very interesting to see how it's going to uh, work for ladies because there was a system like every year was world championship and even if you didn't take part, you would lose your title yeah. even if you didn't play. So I really like this change and candidate tournaments should be exciting. Alexandra is the participant of uh, the uh, tournament. She will try her best to uh, do and qualify uh, to play the world champion uh, from China, Zhu Wenjun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an event that you can follow if you want to support Alexandra and make sure to click on that channel over your mouse over the screen and follow Alexandra Kostenius Twitch channel. In terms of this game, once again, we see only five seconds left for Anna. I'm getting a heart attack and another resignation. Yeah, well, a lot of points. Yeah, two pawns, points. two pawns and the bishop, that's a lot of material. So Anna goes for the next game, but eight point lead already for the chess queen. Yeah, eight point lead. We can probably say that it's clear that Alexandra will win this match. But as we had in the first match, match it's important uh, not to lose all your gains, not to relax, because there is, of course, prize fund for, for this match as well. Winner wins $1,000. And uh, another $1,000 is uh, divided by percentage. Indeed. So Anna will need to win a couple of points also for increasing her price for today's participation. Very important point there. Therefore, even if the match is decided, 
it doesn't matter how yeah. much you earn. Of course, it's always nice to how many chocolates you can buy, basically, <laughs> or carrots. Oh, <laughs> too healthy. <laughs> All right, so what, what we are having here, nice battery on uh, the A1H8 diagonal. Now there is a big threat of mate, so Black has to do something about it. So far, I feel that Anna is in nearly in every game a, under big pressure, mm -hmm. not only by time, but also positions are difficult to play. And somehow Alexandra's strategy uh, of and opening choices are working very well for her. And uh, exactly in this position, for example, now queen has to go to c7, not to drop the b6 mm -hmm. pawn, and it gets under pin. Now knight c3 is a very tricky move because after bishop g2, there might be tricks co uh, connected with knight d5 mm -hmm. or knight b5. And uh, after e5, which is tiny bit um, mysterious move for me because I would, oh, the pawn was hanging, sorry. The yeah, pawn, 95 now just trying to cash in on this pin on the c5. So queen d6, and you need to make moves like that. It's already really looking suspicious with a discovered attack. Knight takes b6, the queen is hanging, Ooh. the rook is hanging. Anna's position is collapsing. Alex in the crossing nuke is on fire. She's been doing excellently. She only made a very few mistakes. I mean, with chess, yes. that's incredible. She only just blundered that one game yeah. where her rook was hanging and there were a very few suspicious moments, but apart from that, she's been controlling the whole match. Tactical vision, 120% on, and her chess skills, of course, are stellar. She is the world number six currently on the classical rating list, and one of the candidates to challenge Julia and Julia, as we mentioned already. Yeah, this is going to be a bad deserved for Alexandra, but we still want to see Anna bouncing back because she's a fighter. She's been doing very well. She would deserve more points. And I think because she had many, many winning positions, right? Yeah. Just depending on this one blunder. Yeah, and one blunder, time pressure. I think biggest problem for Anna was that she did not really manage how to um, uh, divide a correct time, where to think and uh, what kind of decisions uh, to take. But yeah, it's an online chess. It's very important uh for blitz matches and for tactical visions to be fast there are a lot of factors uh in um, online chess and blitz chess generally and alexandra did perfect she uh, she was and i think is stronger in this match mm -hmm. in this particular uh match and it's great for her because candidates tournament is coming up and mm -hmm. uh to show opponents that she is uh, prepared. She's in good shape. Yeah, she's in great shape and heading into the candidates that starting in three days. That's why we keep referring to it. Alexandra is going to Kazan probably right after this match is yeah. over. Yeah, and we'll have tomorrow the match of Valentina Gunina versus Irina Crash. Valentina is also one of the participants uh, of the candidates mm -hmm. tournament. That's going to be exciting, but Let's take care of this game now. What is going on? I think uh, Alexandra is doing a game very fine. I like the uh, pin on the A1, H8 diagonal. That's why knight C4 happens. Now she can actually relax and she can just um, accept draws any moment. Yeah, but she's such a fighter. She goes for E3, a very yeah. aggressive move. She wants to win and win and win. She's not going for any draw. Yeah, and uh, Anna once again has 8 seconds, 28 seconds for Alexandra is very difficult. Look at this bishop maneuver, it's mm. very nice. Bishop was not doing anything on b7 because of f3 pawn, and bishop c8, bishop f5, now bishop is into the game. Oh, knight c3, knight e3, yep. nice tactic. Back rank. that was a back rank problem, so the knight is untouchable. Yeah, and after knight b3, I still like black's position, even though material is equal, but I think that uh, black is doing fine. Just she should not take on e2. Mm -hmm. And the, now it can. happened after the king was moved here, so there's no more background problem. More trades are happening. The pawns are disappearing from the board. Still tricky with the rook and knight going against the white king, but I believe Anna has survived the most difficult stage of this game. She did, yeah, she did. And this probably uh, will be draw, which Alexandra, I think, doesn't mind. Although there's now still 
pressure. White has won the G7 pawn with this attack on the F7 pawn, and she can pick up the H4 pawn as well. Yeah, that was a bit unexpected. So I think I should say more often that it's going <laughs> to be an easy draw because I never, never guessed whenever I said it, it something went wrong. I don't know. We are it's great at fault. predictions. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as good as smarter chess. Shout out to smarter chess. And oh. for the stuff that well, the bishop is gone. Yeah. Is what bishop? What? What? I'm trying to give shout out and the bishop is gone. The H pawn is still alive and that's a possible move. Why? Why? Oh my god, that was bad luck. Really very bad luck for Anna Zatonsky, who had actually winning position, but yeah. It was a fork night and Anna is losing on time. A game where she was supposed to win and not lose that bishop. Well, sometimes when things go downhill, it's really going downhill. You know, the wheels speed up. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's what's happening to Anna currently. Yeah, it's not easy to bounce back and uh, it's pulled a lot of blunders. She had a chance to bounce back, but it's still 10 points lead. I don't think she can catch up 12 minutes to finish the match. It's really not so much time to catch up and I don't think tie will happen how it will happen. No, this is already a 10-point lead for Alexandra with only 12 minutes left from the bullet. That is the final segment of the match. And remember that the winner of today will get a $1,000 and the other 1000 of the price fund for today's match is divided in terms of the percentage, which is looking great for Alexandra at the moment. Yeah, it's very important. So... Yeah, one more game we have where uh, I think uh, Anna is under pressure because I generally like this structure for white. It's Dutch stonewall structure and black managed to get out with her bishop uh, out to h5, which is kind of the main point. You don't want to have a bishop on c5, but it's very difficult to play this because white has center, white has squares, mm -hmm. and um, somehow I always like to play against Stonewall. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that I also prefer to try to make those squares weaker with the, the exposed position Nine because of the pawn structure, but here I think it won't be that much about Ooh. the pawn structure, but those four knights. Get your fork emote out uh, because this is another tactical motive. Oh my god. Yeah, Fortnite. Oh my god. It's oh, it's difficult. All these double attacks, a lot of opportunities missed by um, Anna and a lot of blunders. Uh, in Blitz, I guess it, it's like who will blunder more because there is no way you're playing for three hours and yeah. you don't have blunder. So it's totally fine. Uh, the blunders, but yeah, it seems like Anna is the one who blundered a lot of times and is now 10 points down. 10 points, that's huge. She will try to win the last couple of games because that will at least give her a bigger price for today yeah. for the split um, percent, according to the split percentage, splitting the $1,000, that is the second thousand of the 2000 I'm making it so complicated, but it's not this complicated. <laughs> but yeah, the more you win, the better. Yeah, that's the conclusion. A actually, it works like this in life as well. Yeah. <laughs> in everything. Oh my God. It was such a big oh. moral that I've come up with. I know. <laughs> We're getting tired too. <laughs> Where's my talk? <laughs> The Sicilian, close Sicilian on the board, one of the final games. Yeah, and 10 minutes to go before the end of the match. And there is 11 points lead by Alexandra Kostinuk, which is impossible to catch up in 10 minutes, even if you win in a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's really impossible. So we can definitely say that Alexandra Kostinuk will be the winner of this match so she will mm -hmm. qualify into semi-finals uh as well as alina danielian did in the last match uh, and she was the underdog this time the favorite wins the match what happens in this game i do like white i do like white's position and i do like what's uh going on but d3 pawn is a bit weak so we cannot 
completely uh, focus on uh, attack. Yeah, I'm just realizing that so far Alexandra has won all the bullet games, which has never happened. Oh yeah, is that there the case? Has never been. I'm, I hope that is true because I'm I'm just a little amazed that yes, how difficult it is to have a perfect score after why oh plenty of games in That's a bullet. Impressive. That's impressive. All games. Wow, 100% score. Wow. Yeah, if she wins all the games, this will be the first time ever in speed chess history. And that is all speed chess championship yeah. cover because this is the first women's speed chess championship. Yeah. yeah, a lot of games like we have speed junior championship, we have uh, women's championship now, but we had men's speed men's yeah. championship open section and never happened 100% score wow can well, she do it in history i think that this is the question it's not the question anymore who's winning the match we know yeah. it's alexandra kotnik moving on to the next stage but will she make it a perfect score let us know in the chat what do you think and shout out to all of you thousands of you joining us today for the women's features championship we so thank you for being here and for your support this is the first ever Women's Features Championship, but definitely not the last one here on chess.com. No, no, definitely not. And we are really happy to be here and to be covering and hosting the event. Thank you all of you for joining. And uh, it, it was still a great match. Just we had very exciting match, the first match, because the score was level. Uh, but Alexandra showed a great uh, skill um, of playing. She's very fast. She's very tough opponent. Um, and still, Anna had chances mm -hmm. to bounce back in the match. Indeed, now this position is still very dangerous. You see that the white king is struggling. So is the rook. What are those moves on the fourth rank? The rook didn't have many squares. And isn't it just trapped? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Trapped. One more point for Alexander Kostinik. She's going for the perfect score in bullet. Wow, and six minutes to go. We will have an interview after uh, this, and we will definitely ask Alexandra if she expected to mm -hmm. have a perfect score in uh, bullets that, that's, that will make history of speed chess. Uh, so don't go anywhere. We will uh, have short interviews with the players. Yeah, after the bullet is done. So six more minutes of this segment and that's it. The end of the match. Can Alexandra win all her games in the next six minutes? That is the question now. Wow, I don't know. Uh, I think how many games? Probably maximum three games they uh, can uh, play in uh, six minutes. I think hmm. so. I don't know. So will she win coming six game, three games in six minutes? Wow. Yeah, at least three games. And thank you, Smarter Chess, for creating a poll whether chocolate or carrots are better food for chess players. I think everyone should vote. Please let us know your opinion. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to lose so badly. <laughs> Please let us know your opinion. Can we one more time have a link in the chat to this? really important poll. I think it's more important than any elections. Make sure to vote. You need your voice to be heard, all right? I need to know your All opinion. rabbits come out, please. <laughs> chocolate oh, maniacs of the world. I'm gonna send some virtual chocolate in the chat just to show my I support. Want, I want carrot emo. Do we have? I think uh, Grandmaster Hammer should have carrot emo. He loves carrots. Oh, carrots. No in carrots the chat. on my channel. No. Please. Mm -hmm. Oh, Definitely yeah. chocolate. This is one of the final games of the bullet. Will Alexander make it a perfect score so far? She's doing very well. Not this particular game, but in general, the tendency that she came back from difficult positions. What is that knight takes c3 move? Yeah. What was that? Knight takes c3, just the rooks go also on ranks. Not just, yeah, after uh, three hours, I think anything can woo. happen. And yeah, if you can just mouse sleeps or anything. Just it's very tiring for players because even we are tired. We don't play. Oh, we're yeah. not under pressure, but it's tiring to play for three hours. And I think that is the reason of such moves like Knight C3. But yeah, it is a crushing score and probably the biggest uh, score, I think. 
Yeah, in the Women's Futures yeah. Championship, this will be the biggest score. Of course, we haven't seen many matches. This is the second match. But I would think that this could be the biggest difference in terms of the two players. Overall, we will still have tomorrow's match. Let's remind everybody yeah. that tomorrow it's Valentina Gulina versus Irina Crush. And then on the 30th of May, we have the next match that is between Harika Dronavali and Marie Sabak. The winner of those matches, today's, tomorrow's, and the one on the 30th of May, will make it to the semifinals. Those four players will face each other. Yeah. And then we have the finals. Yeah, the finals. It will be interesting who can make it for uh, to finals. Definitely, Alexandra Kostinuk will be the one uh, who will try her best. Uh, to be still there and uh, to go to finals because it's clear that she is winning this match. She is, but the question remains, will she make it a perfect score, which has never happened? Oh, interesting. She goes for opponent game. Um, yeah, but this is winning because the king is Foster in the, the square, yeah. king c3 and king b2. Another win for Alexandra wow. Kostinuk, which means that she has... Still 100%. She won all bullet games. This is incredible. It this is. is impressive. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go to finish the match. So it means that we will have time only for one maximum two games. Yep. And if she wins next game, she will have 100%, which will be, she will make the history. Nobody ever did it. Wow. No one, not even Magnus Carlsen, not even Hikaru Nakamura, no one has ever won wow. all games in the bullet, which is just insane. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's so impressive. Uh, and it's so stressful for the one who is losing. I know. I feel really sorry for Anna. She is Anna too, so I obviously <laughs> feel bad for every Anna in the world. If they are losing, but apart from that, she's been doing really well at the beginning of the match. She doesn't deserve such a huge difference. I think yeah. Alexandra clearly played way better. But is this the score that we thought that would come out of those games? Oh, really? Not. No, I thought that it would be a really close match, and um, I thought Alexandra was still favorite because she is very strong, experienced. And she's streaming. Uh, she has her own channel, so you can uh, see somewhere there. Anna does these things. <laughs> hey, I was showing off with my mom. <laughs> so we committed about five years ago. Miss Strategy, Miss yeah. Tactics. Yeah, back. That's an old. She's gonna one. have her channel. <laughs> she's gonna have her channel. <laughs> oh yeah, pressure on me. But yeah, another uh, game we have. Oh, so this is sorry, it was my bad that I wasn't showing the current position. <laughs> Technical genius. <laughs> High five. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have here? Um, okay, again, pawn up for Alexandra Kostinuk. It really looks like she's going for another win. Will she make hundred percent? But the pawns actually disappeared. I should never predict anything. I so should really you. never predict anything. You are just jinxing the players, I feel like. But this is it, the last game, final game of the bullet segment. And if Alexandra wins, that's going to be... We will need to add up how many games she has won. Oh, my God. I just a lot. struck already in the bullet portion how many games she has won. A so lot. The thing is, this Rukan game, why it should hold. But Anna has been really on the downhill where you can't stop. It yeah. just, you're, you keep rolling like a snowball. Um, this should be a draw. Yeah, but uh, 17 seconds, 20 seconds, they, they, this should be, though, if this is a draw, it won't be 100% for mm. Alexandra Postinuk. But still, nobody won so many games in bullet, I think. True. She will still have, she will still have the record that she won almost every game except yeah. for this one this will be a draw or can anna win this that would be i think for anna how she feels about the match it would be great if she wins the final game yeah. and yeah. then giving an interview is somewhat better than losing no i'm not sure because i like the uh pawns on b5 and uh c6 oh anna is playing the yeah, white pieces that's what I meant. Like she has yeah. chances to win anna has a chance to win the last game yeah and i think that's what will happen uh, she's she has also more time on clock, 
and the time is up. So this is the last game. Already Queen is on the board and this really looks like that Anna is going to win the last game and it will be 20 to 8 points, 12 points for Alexandra Kostinu. Yes, yeah, still of course a massive victory for the chess queen. What a bullet final rundown. She wow. has won every single game up until this moment where it was a drawish looking game. Maybe she wanted even more than the draw. Yeah, she ended up losing this one, but still, what a record by yeah. the chess queen. Two queens on the board, and yes, it is Anna won the last game. So there is no more game. Uh, time is up, and Alexandra won a match with an impressive score, 22-8. Really impressive. We will go for a really quick technical break in order to get ready for the interview with the players. Don't go anywhere. And while we are on a break, make sure to follow this lady's Twitch channel. I see a link in the chat because she will start streaming next week. All right, follow her oh. channel. See you very soon. See you. Welcome back, everybody. This is the final segment of today's match of the Women's Features Championship. Congratulations to Alexander Kostanyuk for winning the match with such an impressive score. And Anna, thank you so much for the epic fight. We will have plenty of questions about the game. Oh, we will. And I also want to congratulate Alexandra. Um, a, a bit sad for Anna. It was a, a, indeed impressive score, but how did it happen? Wow, such games, so many. How, how did you feel actually to play online Blitz and uh, what are your first thoughts, both of you? Well, so I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really, I'm not a 100% new to online chess. I've been playing quite a bit in my life, so. I mean, nothing particular. It's uh, what 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 was new is uh, match format because I haven't really, you know, played a, such a long match because uh, usually if you play online against one opponent, I don't know, somehow I get bored after four games and <laughs> I, I just quit. And here we needed to play for three and a half hours. It was not boring, I must say. The time flew very fast, so I'm happy about it because I um, I was afraid that I will, you know. At some point, I will just be bored and um, mistakes will come, so. Great. Anna, how did you feel about the match? Uh, you entered a match against uh, Alexandra. You have a, a positive score against Alexandra at over the board tournament. Did you think that that will help? And how do you consider your chances in online? Uh, so first of all, I have a positive score, maybe like in uh, like long chess, like long games. But I think uh, I'm not sure if I have a good score in blitz game. I know Alexandra is very strong blitz player. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't consider that I have good chances in the match because I know how strong she is. And especially on online chess, she has probably more experience. Mm -hmm. And I need to practice more, and especially in the end, I got like extremely tired, and I hope I could do, do better in one-minute chess. 
So it was very tense and thank you, Alexandra, for good fight. And I had feeling that by the end of the match, you just start playing better than in the beginning. Yeah, Alexandra, we were actually following the webcam uh, also, and you were looking up at the camera, and then you were you started laughing at some point. Can you tell us what was happening? Yeah, my husband just arrived. <laughs> we oh, haven't seen each other it. for a long time, and <laughs> he just <laughs> arrived, and yeah, so he needed to wait a bit. So it's a happy moment, of course. We have been uh, going through the database, and Alexandra, you have played over 2,000 Blitz and Bullet games combined on chess.com. Uh, did you come wow. to I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you think that that will give you, I'm sure you weren't aware of the number, but you have played plenty of games. Did you think that that will give you a good chance going into not just today's match, but the Women's Ch Speed Chess Championship in general? Well, that's a bit tricky because we are playing with incremental time and it's different than just playing, you know, online three three minutes or bullet uh, games. It's different when you play with seconds, uh, additional seconds. That means that you need to uh, be concentrated till the, uh, till the end of every game because there was one blunder, I blundered to Rook. And if you blunder here, then the game is over. Uh, while when you play like online with no increment, uh, you always have chances. You know, I've lost hundreds of games um, when I was winning, but just somebody flagged me, and that's considered to be normal. But uh, somehow in this uh, speed chess championship, we still try to play chess. I mean, logically, <laughs> to finish the game. Um, but of course, I mean, any I think experience helps. Um, um, but it's I think it's absolutely different than playing a match on like a three D like real pieces because <laughs> you your perception. I mean, you see the board differently, and um, sometimes you miss uh, some moves that um, you would never miss playing uh, like normal pieces. So that's that's a bit different. But of course, experience helps in any field, and in this particular case it helped me as well I think. Yeah we know that you are very experienced you're streaming as well and we've heard actually that Anna you're uh, going to stream uh, soon is that true? Uh, no <laughs> I'm not aware but maybe <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware of this yet but uh, <laughs> like I consider it to do like more on internet. Hmm. I think my son already is uh, getting a little bit older and I have more time. So that's nice to hear. So we still have some hopes that Anna will be streaming. We do have hopes and we really like your outfit that you are wearing the chess.com polo. And earlier you had a little note on your t-shirt. Can you tell us about that? About this one? Yeah, you had a, a green note. Uh, also. The, green, the green one. I want to congratulate my student heir from Texas. Uh, she was a... Uh, uh, for uh, birthday, it was her birthday yesterday, and I want wish her like a lot of uh, success in chess and everything. Air, if you can hear me. <laughs> well, that's very nice. Happy birthday. I was uh, saying during show that I would love to have such coach. It's it's <laughs> so great that uh, you had the little note, and that was for your student. Oh, yeah. Actually, like I'm trying to find it. Like where it was here, <laughs> and I cannot that <laughs> now find it. Yeah, she so can be suddenly disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday to her. And I was also impressed that you are wishing your student happy birthday through the stream. Yeah. And uh, I just would, would like to say about practice that I tried to practice like one minute plus one seconds, but nobody wanted to play. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no but you can just one minute chess. Just... Maybe I should ask Alexander to practice with me before the match. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think, I mean, if you lower your rating, I mean, you can always find. People. Experience, experience. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you put the level. I mean, you want to play. Usually, that's what happens. I mean, to me, I put the level. Uh, I mean, the rating is very high. So, yes. but if you want to find someone with, I mean, this particular time control, you should mm -hmm. just lower it. Yeah. And usually, oh, I should ask my husband to practice with me. <laughs> <laughs> Online. Online? Yes. Why not? We have two rooms. <laughs> 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 When kids are sleeping. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's really nice. Alexander, you qualified into semifinals um, and tomorrow uh, there will be a match between Valentina Gunina and Irina Krus. So you will play the winner of uh, that match. Can I ask you who do you prefer to play? <laughs> well, I mean, um, that's difficult to answer because, of course, I mean, if we speak about, like, if it would be a, a normal, like, life uh, match, of course, Valentina would be a favorite, but online, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, especially since, uh, I mean, um, Valentina is also going to play in the candidates, so she's already... She might be already in Kazan, you know, she might already feel like not giving too much energy to this match. And um, somehow it might, well, it's going to be interesting. I'm sure I will, I will be watching it uh, tomorrow night. And, but what's good, it's going to happen after Kazan. That, that will be like, you know, a, <laughs> a breath of fresh air, I'm sure. Because, I mean, classical chess for me, it's... It's um, how to put it. It's always, it's it's not really a pleasure. I mean, mm -hmm. while yeah. bleeds, especially online bleeds, I can enjoy it. I can relax. You know, I can have fun. While Kazania and the candidates, I consider more like a hard work, and you know that work that you do. I mean, sometimes it can go badly, <laughs> and yeah. um, there is nothing you can do. I mean, you, you try your best, but how it will go, no one can expect. Well, when you play Blitz, no, one game went wrong. Okay, no problem. There's going to be another one. And <laughs> you, can always, uh, <laughs> you can always try your luck in the um, next games. Well, okay, Kazan is different. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow match. tomorrow's match. I'm going to watch it. And then after Kazan, I will certainly <laughs> have fun. <laughs> And enjoy Thanks. very much the That's match. Nice. We wish you good luck into the candidates. That's definitely the uh, most important tournament that's coming up for you. As you were already world champion, we know that you want to uh, get back your crown. Well, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that I have like this particular goal in mind. What I want to do is to play well and. Uh, you know, to do well in the tournament. And then mm -hmm. there's going to be only one winner. And, okay. Great there approach. Eight very strong players. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. But it's going to be a very tense and tough tournament. We okay. wish you the best of luck for the candidates tournament. And we are not aware of your upcoming events. If you can let us know about your future tournaments. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if like any near, you know, any chess event in the near future. I will be teaching many chess camps in the United States. Oh. It's uh, <laughs> I invite everyone. Can I make like some advertisement of camp where I'm teaching? Yeah, <laughs> I'm teaching in Connecticut. So it's like uh, for talented youth, like very good camp. It's chess and tennis camp, and like one in Chicago and one in St. Louis. St. Louis, oh, you yeah. don't need advertisement for just St. Louis, probably, right? I'm gonna so send chess, 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 chess and tennis might be might be good for my daughter. Huh? Yes, by the way, maybe She's playing it's, tennis. It's, it's very I mean, good camp. half professionally, so. <laughs> no, but they have very good uh, okay uh, tennis coaches as well. So it's mm. so maybe maybe, and I, I promise to take care of her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. Maybe for the not for this summer because it's already planned, but for the next uh -huh. one, I will keep it in mind. Yes, yeah, so it's... <laughs> that's really is it only for children or can our viewers sign up? Because I think now everyone is interested in the chess yeah. camps. <laughs> yeah. I would go. I would go. I would. I would take Daniel, and I would just. I would just be there. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much to both of you for participating. And once again, Alexander, congratulations on qualifying to the next Thank stage. You. Good luck for the candidates. We will be watching. And we will be back tomorrow with the match we already mentioned, Valentina Gunina versus Irina Crush. We will say goodbye to the players for now. And then we are back after a very quick break for a summary of the match. Yeah. Thank you for your fight. Thank you. And congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Anna. And goodbye. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. And good luck in Kazan. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.
what an epic match. We are bursting out of laughter because the carrot versus chocolate fight is still an ongoing battle between Sophie and me, and better I will end up in the basement. Oh, yeah, <laughs> full of chocolates. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I can sign right wow, now. Wow, what a match. Alexandra, she she was uh, in a great shape. She crushed with impressive 20 points versus eight. But Anna did uh, uh, show some fighting chess. She missed a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's true, but it's difficult. As players mentioned, this is very different format. It's very different from real chess, and you have to be here for a long time. So it's difficult. But uh, congratulations to Alexandra Kostinuk, who um, qualified into semifinals. Indeed. And as Alexandra mentioned, she normally doesn't play these many games against the same opponent. She said, after four games, I get bored. <laughs> but this match was exciting for her as well. And definitely, it goes to show that experience matters. Alexandra is higher rated than Anna, but online chess, it's a different world as over the board tournament. Alexandra, having played over 2,000 games on chess.com, how many Ooh. games have you guys played on chess.com? Really a lot. Oh, she spent a lot of time there. And the problem actually for Anna was that she could not uh, practice. And there was a very nice tip from Alexandra that she should lower the uh, rating to uh, get the challenge accepted. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that many of you would like to play Anna Zatonsky. Yeah, I would love to play against her. Apart from that, we really want to thank everybody for joining us. This has been such a pleasure to stream for you guys. This has been only the second match of the Women's Speed Championship. Tomorrow we are back with another epic battle, another Russia versus US match. Yes. Yeah, Valentina Gunina is higher rated, but Irina Crush will give her a fight for sure for the qualification spot. Yeah, can US have revenge uh, for today's match? We will know that tomorrow, but the fun is not over tonight as we have Fisher Random mm -hmm. Qualifier coming out right after the show so right after it make sure you stay there will be fisher random qualifier i love fisher random so i would love to play but i decided i would rather have dinner and eat chocolate so my priorities i like fisher random but chocolate it's a little bit higher uh, on yeah. my ranking system but make sure to watch it bigfoot will be hosting the event and it is for a very important qualification spot into the big guns fight that is the World Championship of Fisher Random in the Autumns. Wow. Yes, Ooh, it is. Michael Scarson will be there. Hikaru Nakamura, Nakamura will be there. Oh Everybody God. will be there. And one of you will be there, the person that qualifies today. Yeah, so good luck to all the participants there. I'm sure it, it's, it's going to be a great show. Enjoy. And apart from that, before we say goodbye, we are going to raid Hams Night. So stay with us. We are going over to Hams Night. She's got an amazing stream upcoming bug house, potentially. I've seen her streaming bug house. Oh, Not sure if today is so difficult, bug house, but she's extremely good at bug house. That's so very difficult. I'm very bad in that. Well, me too, but I love bad. bug house. Hope that she's going to stream some bug house today. So we are going over to her channel. Come with us, join us, and see you tomorrow at the same time, same place. So Peter and I will be back with Valentina Gunina versus Irina Crush, another derby that you don't want to miss. See you all tomorrow and thank you for being here. See you. Thank you everybody for joining and thank you for being here. See you tomorrow. Bye.